On day one, I spawned in as Lava Spider-Man in the middle of the Black Forest! Whoa! Lava Spider-Man? What a combination! What will they think of next? But I didn't get to enjoy being the world's hottest web spinner for long, because suddenly, some Endermen were emerging out of the woods around me! Uh oh I think I'm gonna leave you guys to it! I turned and ran off as fast as I could, until I couldn't see the Endermen anymore! They blended in well with the dark trees of the Black Forest! I'm only a baby lava Spider-Man, with ten hearts and no weapons! I can't take on a whole gang of Endermen like this! But I hadn't accounted for one thing, Endermen can teleport! One of them popped up right in front of me, stopping me in my tracks! Why are you running from us, little one? Do you have something to hide? What? No! I don't have anything to hide! I was just running because you guys were scary! No offense. Sorry, kid, but I don't buy that. You're gonna need to come with us. Our master is gonna want to speak to you. I thought about running again, or trying to fight, but then I turned and saw that even more of the Endermen had appeared behind me. There was no way I could get out! On day two, one of the Endermen took me to some kind of strange fort, deep in the Black Forest. I had no idea who these Endermen worked for, or what they planned to do with me. If you just play ball with us, kid, then no harm will come to you. There are just a few things we need to figure out. Somehow, I didn't believe him. He threw me into some kind of prison cell, with tall walls and no ceiling, just staring off into the sky. That's when I noticed a back door. Don't bother trying to open that. I turned and saw a cartographer standing in the corner, watching me. I've tried. It can only be opened from the other side. I've been here for a week, so I think we're gonna be here in the long run. So they got you too, huh? I'm Zozo. They captured me outside. What are you in for? They captured me while mapping out the area. I'm a cartographer. That means I make maps. But they accused me of working for some suspicious person and locked me up. Believe me, I've tried every way to escape. It's impossible. Hmm. Or maybe not. Going on a hunch, I walked over to one of the walls and started to climb up it, like a spider! This must have been one of my awesome Lava Spider-Man powers! Look at me go! I climbed all the way up the wall and hopped up onto the other side. Then I opened the door from the other side, freeing the cartographer! That was amazing, Zozo! You're like a superhero! Aw, oh, jeez, that's nice of you to say! But we should probably get out of here before those weird Endermen come back and try to capture us again! Good idea. We'll split up, and I hope to see you again someday, Zozo. Likewise. Stay safe out there. So I ran off, trying to make my way out of the sinister Black Forest. On day three, I escaped the Black Forest and reached the Badlands, which was as scorching hot and unforgiving as the name suggests. Wow, thank goodness I'm a lava Spider-Man, or I'd be roasting right now. But it wasn't just the heat that was a problem, it was hunger. You can't just run away from a bunch of sinister, mysterious Endermen without working up an appetite. And there aren't that many trees around here either, so I guess apples are out of the question too. But I wasn't out of luck just yet. I managed to find some delicious, healthy carrots nearby and pick them up for a quick snack. I may be a Spider-Man, but I'll take some nice carrots over flies any day. After eating the carrots and filling up my hunger bar, I continued exploring the Badlands until I ran into something spectacular. A huge, tough diamond golem. Hey there, little dude. Pick your job off the floor. You may be looking at the ultimate blinged out golem, but don't worry, I'm actually very approachable. Sorry, I, I don't mean to stare, it's just, wow, you're so shiny. Oh yeah, you better believe it. You know what they say, diamonds are forever, and so am I, no matter what these goofy, unshiny Endermen say. Wait, the Endermen are after you too? I literally just escaped from those guys. Is that so, little bro? And I think we have a lot to say to each other. Follow me, my pad isn't far from here. I'd made another friend. I eagerly followed the diamond golem through the Badlands, excited for whatever would come next. From day four to day five, I continued with the diamond golem over to his pad. It was the coolest base I'd ever seen. The exact kind of thing you'd expect from a blinged out super golem. Wow, this place is amazing, diamond golem. I'm so impressed. Please, kid, call me Dino. And your name? I'm Zozo, Zozo the Lava Spider-Man. That's a mouthful, little Zozo, but I can dig it. What you're lacking in riz, you can make up for in guts. I like that. Let me guess, people have called you a superhero? Wow, that was a good guess. 
I have a talent for reading people. You just look like a hero, man. There are some dangerous people out there. Not every golem is as nice and cool as me. I need your help to take care of the people out there giving me a bad name. Can you dig it? You think you're tough enough? I can dig it, and I definitely think I'm tough enough. I'll help you defeat all the bad guys. Right on, little Zozo. First, though, you can't hang out here. You're harsh in my vibe. Take these tools and go build your own place, get it? Yes, sir. Dino the Diamond Golem gave me a stone sword and a stone pickaxe, and I left to make a base of my own. That's how I ended up in the Amaranth Fields. Yeah, this is a much nicer climate. I immediately started cutting down trees and mining stone until I had enough material to start building a base. It wasn't anywhere near as cool as Dino's base, but if I worked hard, maybe someday it would be. But the physical exercise was worth it anyway, because I suddenly leveled up, getting bigger, stronger, suddenly having 20 hearts, and gaining a new power, Web Blast. Oh yeah, now I'm like a real Spider-Man. And that new power couldn't have come at a better time. One of the same Endermen from earlier teleported in front of me. You, I've been searching for you all day since you escaped our base. I knew you were trouble. Oh, you have no idea. Unlike them, I wasn't taking prisoners. I fired web blast after web blast until the Enderman was no more. When I level up enough, I'm gonna be every bit as strong as Dino the Diamond Golem. From day six to day eight, I continued working on my base, making it a little bigger by adding a new building. And once I'd done that, I could start making it look as cool as Dino's base. During my lunch break, I saw a familiar figure walking through the Amaranth Fields. It was the cartographer who'd been in the prison with me. Of course, I immediately ran over to have a chat with my old cellmate. Hey, buddy, how's the free life treating you? Hi, Zozo. I wish I could say it was shaking out well, but it's honestly been pretty tough. Oh no, why? My boss, an iron golem, was meant to give me instructions on what maps to make next. But when I got to his house, it was destroyed and he was gone. It feels like something suspicious has happened. Maybe someone is going after golems. That's worrying. Take care of yourself out there, cartographer. I'm gonna go tell Dino the diamond golem. If someone is going after golems, he needs to know. And being true to my word, I immediately left to go visit Dino and warn him about the potential threat. Hmm, wish I could say I was surprised, but it ain't easy being a golem. Here's the thing though, us golems are tough. We're not easy to take out. If someone is going after golems, there's a good chance they're a vengeful golem themselves. Do we have any leads on who it can be? Uh, I've heard rumors of an obsidian golem operating in the North Badlands. Go look into that and report back to me. Of course, Dino. I'll get on it. And so I left in search of the obsidian golem, who was potentially behind the golem disappearances. From day 9 to day 10, I traveled north, braving the harsh conditions of the Badlands, knowing how important my mission was. But why would the obsidian golem go after his own kind like that? It doesn't make sense. As a budding superhero, I know that nobody commits a crime without having some kind of motive. But while I was mulling over the mystery I'd been sent to solve, the obsidian golem got the jump on me, literally jumping out right in front of me. Uh -huh. I knew someone was following me. You think because I'm a golem, I'm dumb? Big mistake, bucko. And unless you have a good explanation, it'll be your last. Look, I'm sorry that I was looking for you, but it was for a good cause. I'm hunting the person who's making golems disappear. Huh, like I'd buy that. I think either you're the culprit or you're working for him. And I'm not taking any chances on my life here. Let's go, creep. There was no more reasoning with him after that. The obsidian golem attacked me full force, and there was nothing I could do to talk him down. I just fought back as best as I could until he was finally defeated. But in the process, I was almost completely destroyed. Wow, Dino wasn't kidding about golems being powerful. Luckily for me, a friendly Mungus happened to be passing by. He walked over to me, seeming concerned. You okay there, son? You're not looking so hot, aside from the lava, of course. Yeah, I just got beaten up by a huge, powerful obsidian golem, so you're right, I'm not doing too well. Lucky for you, I've got a spare health potion. Here, take it, you look like you need it more than me. He gave me a health potion, which I quickly drank, delighted to have my health restored. 
You're a lifesaver, literally. Say, do you have any idea what kind of golem might be able to destroy other golems? I'm hunting a dangerous criminal. A golem that destroys golems, huh? That's a tall order. They'd need to be an extremely tough golem to do that. Not to mention incredibly crafty. An obsidian golem is probably too low level to pull off that kind of evil scheme. An extremely tough golem. Interesting. This will give me something to look into. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to Dino the Diamond Golem's awesome pad with less than awesome news. I met Among Us out in the Badlands, Dino, and he seemed to think that the Obsidian Golem didn't have anything to do with all the disappearances. It'd need to be a much stronger golem than him. Huh, who you gonna trust when it comes to golems, little man? Some random Among Us? Or me, an actual golem? Believe me, nobody knows this situation better than Dino. Uh, that makes sense, I guess. What do you think I should do now then? There's a sandstone golem in the Amaranth Fields. I've got a good reason to believe he's involved in all this. You don't need to investigate him, just take him out. Understood? Understood. I'm sorry for ever doubting you, Dino. Yeah, man, you better be. Now knowing how tough golems were, I knew that I needed better weapons to take them on. That's when I found a mining cave and searched deep inside until I found some iron ore. This is exactly what I need. I mined the iron ore and set to building a furnace in that deep, dark cave. I then used the furnace to smelt the iron ore into iron ingots, which I then turned into an awesome iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Now I've really got an edge. I left the cave only to find an angry grizzly bear outside waiting for me. So this is your cave, huh? When the bear tried to attack me, I unleashed some web blasts and then defeated it with my iron sword. First a grizzly bear, next a grizzly golem. From day 13 to day 15, I traveled across the amaranth fields in the glistening nightlight, searching for the sandstone golem so I could carry out my mission. I finally spotted the golem, standing at a campfire and warming himself. It was strange. He didn't look aggressive at all, but I trusted Dino. I carefully approached, my sword drawn, preparing to fire a web blast at him and then charge in for an attack. But before I could, he turned and saw me standing there. Hey there, friend. You look a little chilly for a lava Spider-Man. Want to come and warm yourself by my fire? Are... are you sure? Of course. There's room enough for everyone around here. I approached carefully and stood next to the sandstone golem, even though Dino had told me not to. We talked for a while, shared some jokes, and strangely, he seemed like a nice guy. I just couldn't believe he'd been behind all the golem disappearances. Something was up. Something fishy. I left the sandstone golem safely by his campfire and went back to talk to Dino. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. From day 16 to day 19, I went straight back to Dino's pad to confront him about all the strange things I'd been noticing lately. He wasn't pleased. What? Why didn't you take out the sandstone golem? Why? Don't you trust me? It's not that I don't trust you, it's just everything you've said to me, it doesn't quite add up. Here's what doesn't add up, kid. You and me. If you don't trust me, as in you don't follow every single one of my orders to the letter without question, I can't work with you. Get out of here and never come back. I'll solve the golem disappearances myself. With that, I left Dino's pad, knowing I'd probably never see him again. I returned to my base, only to see, to my surprise, that the cartographer was waiting for me there again. Oh, hey, cartographer, what's up? No time for small talk. I've discovered something important, the one behind the golem disappearances. It's a diamond golem. What? It makes total sense. That's one of the toughest kinds of golems out there. Only he would be strong enough to easily take out other golems. Oh, oh no. Dino was behind it all, all along. He used me. I need to warn Sandstone. I ran back to the Sandstone Golem's camp in the Amaranth Fields, but it was already too late. Sandstone was gone, and only Dino remained. You're too late, Zozo, my man. I just finished up what you should have done. Sandstone's finished. You, you monster, you used me. You've been betraying and destroying your own kind, but why? Simple, a diamond golem is pretty special, but you know what's even more special? Being the only golem, and I like the sound of that. So you're just destroying all the other golems to satisfy your own ego? Yeah, pretty much. Why, you gonna stop me? I'm absolutely gonna stop you. I'm Zozo, the Lava Spider-Man. I'm this world's superhero. And your evil, selfish plan ends here. But it didn't end there, because Dino the Diamond Golem ran up to me and knocked me out cold with a single punch. From day 20 to day 22, I came to at the campsite. Dino wasn't there anymore, but the camp wasn't empty. A 
TNT golem was standing right above me. Oh no, you don't work for Dino, do you? Goodness no, I'm Splodo, the TNT golem. I was here to warn my friend Sandstone about the evil plans of Dino the Diamond Golem, but it seems I was too late. I'm so sorry I couldn't save your friend, Splodo. I should have seen Dino for what he was earlier, but I was so blinded by how cool he seemed. I let him boss me around, but never again. We'll work together to take him down. Splodo returned to my base with me, and I built a new house for him to sleep in while we worked on our shared plan to take down Dino before he could destroy all the golems. I believe in you, Zozo. Together, we're gonna bring this evildoer down. Yeah, we'll be superheroes together. From day 23 to day 26, I traveled back to the Black Forest. It sure feels different being back here after learning so much. I was a lava spider boy back then. Now, I'm a lava spider man. Help! I need somebody! Help! Not just anybody! I need a hero! Hey, that's me! Wait, I know that voice! I followed the sound of the voice and saw the cartographer being attacked by a guster! Get away from him! I fired a web blast at the guster, destroying it! Thank you, that was a pretty close one. I'm glad you showed up. Me too, I want to make up for letting Dino trick me. And that means I need to help as many good guys as I can. Being a superhero isn't just about beating the villain, it's about helping the people who need it. From day 27 to day 31, I continued exploring the Black Forest. As I did, I spotted a herd of sheep that looked really lost. Turned out, I was right. They had lost their old home and were trying to find a new, safe place to stay. So I escorted them back to my base. I guess you guys will need a place to stay. No point in inviting you over and then making you just stand around. That would be rude. So I built a pen for the sheep. It wasn't anything fancy, but they seemed pretty happy with it. After I was done building that, I decided to check in on the rest of the base. While I was gone, Splodo the TNT golem added a chest area and made paths while I was building. Wow. Awesome, so much extra storage. Just what every superhero needs. Meanwhile, Dino the Diamond Golem was at his base in the Badlands, and he was up to no good. If I'm gonna get rid of all the rest of the golems, I'll need some extra muscle. That's where you come in. Think you're up to the task? Bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that means yes, boss. From day 32 to day 35, I hatched a new plan. I need to go back and talk to those Endermen and explain what I know. I think we're actually all on the same side. I just hope they'll listen to me. I traveled back to their base in the Black Forest, where I spotted one of the Endermen standing up front. Hi there, funny story, I was wrong about some stuff. You, bold move coming here, little lava Spider-Man. You're in big trouble. Wait, we don't have to fight. We're on the same side, I promise. Do you think I'm a fool? Why would I believe you? You can take me to your boss. I'll come willingly this time. I just want to talk to him. Interesting. Very well. He took me to an evoker. Hello, my name is Zozo. I, I know who you are. You're an acquaintance of Dino the Diamond Golem, yes? I was, but I was wrong. He tricked me. I'm so sorry. I want to help. I can tell that you have a good and honest heart. The heart of a hero. Very well, young Zozo. There is very little we know for certain at this point, but we do know that the golem disappearances plaguing this land can all be traced back to Dino. I will provide you with more information when I have it, as long as you promise to do the same. It's a deal. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled back to my base. Those guys were actually pretty nice. I can't believe I was so scared of them before, but now we can work together. But if I'm going to be much help, I'll need some better equipment. To the mines! I headed down into the cave and started mining. I found some iron ore, which I smelted into iron ingots. I used it to craft a set of iron armor. I returned to my base shortly after, only to find a toolsmith waiting for me. Excuse me, are you Zozo? Sure am. I brought you something. He handed me a diamond. Oh, wow, thank you. What did I do to deserve this? I just thought maybe you could use it. Also, I need your help. Come with me. We have a friend in common who needs to speak with you. From day 40 to day 43, I followed the toolsmith and was surprised to see the evoker. Hey again, what's going on? I just saw you. Indeed, but I have received some new information that I needed to deliver in person as soon as possible. You see, Dino is... But before he could finish what he was saying, a pillager showed up! Bada bing bada boom! You dead meat, Zozo! Uh-oh, that's me he's talking about! He was way bigger and stronger than me! I'm not sure if I can defeat this guy! Both myself and the evoker ran off in separate directions and met up later, coincidentally. 
Go, Zozo. Run. I will do my best to handle him. I will meet you in a safe place when the coast is clear. You got it. I ran out of there as fast as I could. From day 44 to day 49, I made it back to my base without the pillager following me. I just hope the evoker got out of there okay. I certainly did, young Zozo. The evoker emerged, somehow completely unharmed. You're here. You're alive. Oh, I'm so glad. I was scared the pillager would hurt you. He certainly gave it his best try, but I managed to elude him. I didn't get this far by being an easy target, you know. I may not be much of a fighter, but I know how to survive. Me too. So far, at least. I've learned of something that I believe will help you with your continued survival, and with our shared goal of stopping Dino from continuing to wreak havoc. Ah, oh, sweet! Tell me about it! There is a special weapon, a destroyer, capable of breaking apart diamonds with very little effort. I imagine it would give you the edge you need against Dino when you finally confront him. Sounds perfect! Where is it? That's the trouble. Its location is a secret. I have heard that there may be useful information in the Badlands, however. I suggest you travel there and see what you can turn up. I'll head there now. From day 50 to day 53, I travel to the Badlands in search of information on the Destroyer. They call this place the Badlands for a reason. It's terrible. I hope I find something quickly and don't have to stay here for too long. Thankfully, my wish came true. I spotted a book on the ground, and when I picked it up, I noticed the title, The Destroyer and You. Wow, this is super convenient. Okay, it says that the Destroyer is a special weapon, one that's hundreds of years old. It was created to overthrow a corrupt diamond golem who tried to become the king of the land. Hey, that's kind of like what Dino's doing, I think. But where is it? When I flipped to the end of the book, the last page was missing. Oh no, I bet that was the part of the book with the destroyer's location. Guess I'll have to come up with another plan. Back to the spider base. From day 54 to day 57, I was on my way back to my base when the pillager jumped into view, blocking my path. Hey, I'm walking here. Well, hey, I'm blocking here. You thought you got away, huh? Well, tough toenails, kid. No one gets away from Petey the Pillager. If you won't let me pass, I guess we'll just have to fight about it. Give it a shot, Pipsqueak. I attacked the Pillager, but he didn't even budge. Uh-oh, he's still way too strong. I need to get out of here before this gets serious. I fled the scene and got out of there as fast as I could. Meanwhile, at Dino's hideout, he was feeling triumphant. Another one bites the dust. Soon, I'll be the only golem around. No one's gonna be as special as me. All these other golems better watch their backs. From day 58 to day 62, I ran back to my base. When I got there, I saw that my friends there had built an additional storage room for us to keep weapons in. Hey, with all this space, I should make some new weapons to keep in here. To the mines! I headed down into the cave to see what I could find. Turns out, luck was on my side, because what I found was some diamonds. I've heard of fighting fire with fire. Maybe I should try fighting diamonds with more diamonds. I gathered the diamonds and used them to craft a diamond sword, a diamond pickaxe, and a diamond chestplate. From day 63 to day 66, Splodo came to speak with me. Zozo, I was able to find out the location of that destroyer you're looking for. Apparently, it's in the Brimstone Caverns. Quick, come with me, I'll show you. I followed Splodo to the Brimstone Caverns. Phew, it smells like rotten eggs in here. Yep, that's all the Brimstone. Anyway, here's the place. Uh-oh, looks like we can't get in. I think we need some kind of key. Oh no, I'm sorry, Zozo. I'll help you look for a key. We'll get in there. Thanks, Splodo. You're the bomb. Get it? Yeah, I get it. From day 67 to day 70, Splodo and I walked back to my base. When I got there, the evoker was waiting for me. Hey, maybe I should go ahead and build you a guest room. No thank you, Zozo. This is not a social call, I'm afraid. I'm here to ask you for your help. A magma golem is tearing apart the Amaranth fields, and I fear that he will burn them all down in a fit of rage. Please, help me reason with him before his fiery temper destroys everything. I'll do my best. I looked around, following the smell of burning grass, and sure enough, I spotted a magma golem stomping around. He looked really angry. Hey, I can see you're upset about something, but you don't have to do this. Please stop before someone gets hurt. You! I know you! You're working with him! That awful diamond golem who killed Sandstone! I have nothing to say to you. With my mouth, at least. We can talk with my fists. Your fists can talk? Oh, no, you mean you're gonna fight me. Wait! He wouldn't listen! He attacked me, and I had to fight back! 
My diamond chest plate protected me from taking too much damage, and I managed to knock him back long enough to talk again. I don't work with Dino anymore. I realized what kind of guy he really was. Now I'm trying to stop him from hurting any more golems. I swear. You're not just lying to save your skin? No, from a lava guy to a magma guy, I promise I'm telling the truth. Then I've got an idea. Let's you and me work together and show that diamond studded jerk he's not as special as he thinks he is. From day 71 to day 74, I showed the magma golem back to my base. He told me that he had lost his home while trying to run from Dino, and he didn't have anywhere else to go. Luckily, we had plenty of room. You can stay here for as long as you want. It'll be fun. But I couldn't stick around for the housewarming. The pillager turned up, ready to cause some trouble. Still gonna be fun when I crash your party, little man? Oh no, the pillager. That's right. Hey, nice place you got here. Would be a shame if something happened to it. With that, he started attacking my base and smashing it up. I drew my diamond sword and attacked the villager, but he was still stronger than me. Nice try, Pipsqueak, but no dice. I'm gonna take something of yours to teach you a lesson. Before I could stop him, he ran away. Zozo, help! That was Splodo's voice. I ran in to help, but the pillager and Splodo were already gone. I couldn't stop him from taking Splodo. What kind of hero am I? I couldn't take it anymore, and I went to my room to lie down. A little while later, the magma golem came to my room. Zozo, I built some additional defenses while you were resting. We have a new perimeter wall around the base to protect against any future invaders. Thank you, that makes me feel a little bit better. Now I just need to find a way to get Splodo back. Meanwhile, in the Badlands. Now that the pillager has taken that TNT golem that I couldn't get to before, I'm one step closer. That loser Zozo is never gonna beat me. From day 75 to day 78, I was busy trying to come up with a plan to rescue Splodo. I'm not ready to fight the pillager yet. I'm going to need something to give me an edge. A new weapon or another ability, something. And as if on cue, the evoker appeared. Zozo, I heard what happened to your explosive little friend. I believe this may help you. The pillager is vulnerable to explosive attacks and has very sensitive eyes. Its flashy ammunition should both damage and distract him. He handed me a firework crossbow. Oh, this is awesome. Do you know where I can find the pillager? I know many things, Zozo. And yes, that is one of them. He lives just outside of Dino's lair in the Badlands. Thank you. I took my new crossbow and set off to find the pillager and get my friend back. From day 79 to day 84, I traveled to the Badlands. It didn't take long for me to spot the pillager lurking around outside of Dino's base. Give me back my friend. Nah, I don't feel like it. Maybe this will change your mind. I fired my firework crossbow and it actually managed to hit. Hey, maybe I can actually do this. And so the battle with the pillager began. I felt much more confident with my new weapon, but he was still much stronger than me. Ready to give up? No, this is merely a tactical retreat. I ran away until I found a big rock to hide behind, where I met, against all odds, Splodo the TNT Golem. Zozo, I escaped, and on my way out, I managed to grab this. Quick, eat it. He tossed me a golden apple. I ate it in one big bite, and I felt myself growing stronger. My heart increased to 60, and I gained a jump boost. I grew too. That golden apple gave me the strength I needed to finally defeat the pillager. I ran back, fighting the pillager one on one until nothing was left. Dino's strongest henchman had been defeated and Splodo came over to celebrate with me. I did it. Thank you, Splodo. You're a real hero. So are you. Come on, let's go home. From day 85 to day 89, Splodo and I returned to the base. Guess what? Chicken butt? No, that's <laughs> really funny though. I grabbed something that the pillager dropped when you beat him. It's a magic key. I think it's the key to the brimstone caverns. You can finally go and get the destroyer. That's amazing, you've helped so much. Thank you, Splodo. You can thank me by getting rid of Dino once and for all. With the magic key in hand, I traveled back to the brimstone caverns. I held my breath as I unlocked the door and entered the caverns. There, I saw it, the destroyer. Yes, finally. I started walking toward it, but a wither skeleton jumped in the way. Oh, no you don't. It attacked me, but I fought back. It took a little while, but I managed to defeat it. A destroyer, yes. I've got to get this back to my base. From day 90 to day 94, I left the brimstone caverns, ready to head back to my base. 
But as I exited the caverns, Dino, the diamond golem, appeared in behind me. Hey, Zozo, how's it going? What? Aren't you here to attack me? Nah, why would I do that? We used to work together pretty well, you and me. What do you say we team up again? Give it another shot. Are you kidding? You lied to me. You kidnapped my friend. You're trying to hurt tons of people. Why would I ever work with you? Because when I'm the big boss around here, you're gonna wanna be on my good side. I don't think you have a good side. With great power comes a lot of responsibility, and you've misused it at every turn. Thanks, but no thanks. Fine, have it your way. Before I could stop him, he pushed me into a deep hole and snatched the destroyer out of my hands. He left me there and took the weapon with him. From day 95 to day 97, I used my new climbing skills to escape Dino's trap. But by the time I got out, he was long gone, and so was the destroyer. I need some advice. I should go visit the evoker and see what he thinks I should do. I traveled to the Black Forest to see if the evoker had any tips for me. But when I got there, the place was in chaos. The evoker was there, but he was badly injured. Oh no, what happened? Dino came through on a rampage. He must have learned that I told you about the destroyer. I don't have much time, little lava Spider-Man. Listen close, you must get the destroyer back. It holds a great power and it will give you the strength you need to defeat him. The weapon itself is not what matters, but the strength within you that it will bring to the surface. The power is within you. And just like that, he was gone. Thank you for everything. I promise to get revenge on Dino for everything he's done. On day 98, I returned to my base to get some rest and come up with the next phase of my plan. But when I got there, it was a mess. The perimeter wall was destroyed and I couldn't see my friends anywhere. Oh no, Dino must have done this. He did. Splodo, you're okay. I am. I managed to hide from him. Everyone else ran away. I don't blame them. It was scary. But don't get discouraged, Zozo. We're going to be superheroes together, remember? I'm not so sure, Splodo. He's so much more powerful than us. How can we ever hope to beat him? Listen, I know it seems hopeless, but we have to try. I'm still here. It's not over yet. He came after our base. Now we need to take the fight to him. On day 99, I traveled to the Badlands to confront the baddest guy in those lands once and for all. I don't know if I'll make it through this, but I know I have to try. Splodo was right. I can't lose hope now. When I got there, he was waiting for me. Hey, Zozo. Welcome to my humble abode. Ready to lose another fight? Nope. I attacked him, but he hit hard. I took a lot of damage, but I got an idea. I got my firework crossbow and fired a shot. It surprised Dino, and he jumped back. When he did, he dropped the destroyer. Now's my chance. I grabbed the destroyer and took off in the opposite direction of Dino's base. Yeah, you better run. I'll be back. I took the destroyer back to my base and remembered what the evoker said. The power is in me. I just have to find it. I used the destroyer, and as I did, I had a vision of every fight I'd had so far, every friend I'd made along the way. I felt so much stronger. When the vision ended, I saw that my base was magically repaired, as if Dino had never destroyed it. That's it. I'm ready. On day 100, I returned to Dino the Diamond Golem's base for the final showdown. This time, I had the destroyer, and more importantly, the heart of a hero. My heart, I mean. You're too late, Zozo. Pretty soon there won't be any golems left. You think you're special? You're not special. I'm the only one who's special. That's not true. You think you're better than everyone else, and that's why you'll never really win. I used the destroyer to attack, and for the first time, I did some real damage to Dino. Hey, what's the big idea? Justice, that's what. It was a tough fight. Dino was the strongest opponent I had ever faced, but I knew I could beat him. And after a hard battle, I finally did. I can't wait to go home and tell Splodo. We did it, we beat the bad guy. We're real superheroes after all. On day one, I spawned in the Sika Woods as an ice Spider-Man. This is awesome. I didn't think the world's greatest web slinger could get any cooler, but hey, here I am. Things weren't all peachy though. For starters, I only had 10 hearts. And for seconds, a giant buff pigless came barging through the trees towards me. Spider-Man, I found you. Wait, what? I don't understand. Don't play dumb with me, Spider-Man. I'm Pigless Polly, the biggest, meanest, smartest, and also most beautiful Pigless in all the land. 
And you've been trying to mess with my plants for years. Don't think that turning your suit blue would confuse me. I'm a genius. But I'm just Zozo playing, Spider-Man. There's been some kind of mistake. You will confound me not, puny spider. You better run, or my bubble brawler boys will beat you into a spidery pulp. I could tell when I wasn't wanted, and this was one of those times. I turned and ran as quickly as I could. What did she mean about her bubble brawler boys? But life soon answered my question. A gang of bubble monsters emerged from the trees and started chasing me. Oh, there they are. Using my enhanced spider speed, I was able to escape and find a hiding place for the night. Always great to spawn into a world where someone already has a grudge against me. I need to figure this out before it's too late. On day two, when I got the sense that the coast was cleared, I spider climbed out of my hiding spot and started to explore the woods a little more casually. This place is actually pretty beautiful. Maybe I should work on building a home around here. That's when one of the bubble monsters jumped out in front of me. Oh, I'll build you a home, Spidey. Six feet under. You've got a lot of nerve showing your face around here. Lady Polly wants us to destroy you on sight. I still don't know what I did to upset your beast of a boss, but if you think this icy superhero won't be fighting back, you've just made your last mistake. We battled hand to hand. What the bubble monster didn't know was I had super spider strength, so my hits really packed a punch. After a few well-aimed strikes, I burst his bubble and moved on. Wow, beating that guy up really worked up an appetite. I need to find myself some nosh. Lucky for me, there were plenty of trees around. I collected the yummy pears from the leaves. Tasty. I knocked down the rest of the pear tree with my spider fists. With the spare wood, I made myself a wooden pickaxe. Then I dug into the ground and collected enough stone to assemble a stone pickaxe, stone axe, and a stone sword. I've got that caveman swag now. With my new stone axe, I gathered more wood and built myself a little spider base with a room for me to spend the night indoors. Ah, <sighs> nice and cozy. Things are gonna get better and better. On day three, I left my base and went out to explore the Jacaranda Forest. It was a gorgeous sight to see. Even if there aren't any useful resources around here, it's worth it for the view. But just because the view is breathtaking didn't mean that everyone who lived there was chill. Case in point, a big angry mutated bee ran over to me. What do you think you're doing here? Uh, I'm walking here? Are you making fun of me? No, I don't even know who you are. The name's Benson, Barry B. Benson. And I was just a normal bee until my human wife left me and I got turned into the super-powered mutant abomination. I... I don't see how that's my problem. Well, I gotta take it out on somebody, don't I? Barry B. Benson attacked me with furious intensity. And even with my spider strength, I couldn't defeat his divorced mutant rage. Instead, I ran away as he fumed loudly in the background. He sounded like he should chill out or maybe get into jazz. On my way out of the Jacaranda Forest, I ran into a sad-looking spider. Seeing as I myself was also a spider, I decided to go over and ask her if she was okay. Hey, I'm Zozo. Who are you? Is everything okay? I'm Spider Queen, and sadly, things aren't okay. Oh, wow. Spider Queen? Does that mean you're the queen of all spiders? No, I'm actually a one spider tribute act to the band Queen. They're my favorite. But Pigless hates Queen, and she won't let me perform anymore. That's horrible. Why not come back to my base? You can work on your act there. That's amazing, Zozo. I want it all. From day four to day five, I returned to my little base in the Sika Woods with Spider Queen at my side. It's not much, but it's home. It looks amazing to me, Zozo. Musicians don't make much money, and I'm super impressed by this. Do you want me to sleep on the floor? What? No way! I'm gonna build you your own room! So that's exactly what I did. I gathered up enough wood to make Spider Queen her own special room where she could jam out all she liked. Oh, Zozo, you're the best! I couldn't be happier! Take a second to hide in there. I think I can hear another bubble monster coming towards us! Spider Queen hid away inside the room I'd made for her as I went out to battle the bubble monster! Pigless sends her regards. We're gonna destroy you for her, one way or another, or she's gonna do it herself. She's gonna need to destroy me herself, because there's no way you're up to the task, Bubble Boy. With my new stone sword, the Bubble Monster didn't stand a chance. He was soon defeated, and I returned to Spider Queen. It's okay, the Bubble Monster is gone now. You're safe. We are the champions, yay. Thank you for saving us, Zozo. Here, have one of my guitars. It plays music while you fight with it. Spider Queen gave me the guitar, and I immediately equipped it. Whoa, this is cool as heck. Oh yeah, we will rock you. 
On day six, I started the day with the wholesome act of sheep gathering, just in case I need the wool for a new spidey suit. I wandered into the woods and after a long time, emerged from them, seeing a road. Whoa, where am I? I followed the road and soon found myself in a cul-de-sac with some really cool and colorful houses nearby. Is that a flying orange? At the base of the flying orange, I saw some sheep wandering around, just what I was looking for. I started to round up the sheep when an orange boy came bounding out of the orange at me. Get away from my sheep, you costume creep. Whoa, whoa, hang on a second. I didn't want to hurt him, but he wouldn't listen to me. Richie, what are you doing? Leave that guy alone. Yeah, Richie, he didn't know those were your sheep. Richie stopped chasing me as three more characters, one of which looked like a bear, came running over to me. Max, you know who this guy is? He looks like he might be dangerous. Relax, Beast. I'm sure he's fine. Whoa, that suit is awesome. Did you invent that? I'm something of a scientist myself. You guys are being so rude. What's your name? I'm Sky. This is Beast, Max, and Richie. I'm Zozo, and yeah, this is my Spidey suit. One of the icy variety, anyway. What are you guys doing out here? But before they could answer, I saw the last person I wanted to see. It was Pigless. She had found me, and she was wielding a huge, terrifying mace. Like my new hardware, Spider-Man? This mace is one of the most powerful weapons out there. Perfect for squishing a nasty little bug like you. Whoa, who is the little piggy? Max, don't provoke her. Can't you see what she's holding? Hey, who do you think you are talking to our new friend like that? Oh, glad to know there's no hard feelings about the sheep. This is Pigless Polly. She kind of wants to destroy me. Enough jibber jabber. I'll squash all of you then. Yeah, we'd like to see you try. We're not scared of you. Max threw down a mysterious item on the ground and a bunch of armor appeared out of it. His friends suddenly put on armor that matched their colors along with some matching swords. Eh, fine. No need to ruin a perfectly good neighborhood. But mark my words, Spidey. I'll find you again, and I'll be stronger than ever. Pigless Polly turned and ran, leaving me alone with Max and his friends. Whoa, guys, thanks for the help. I could use you guys back at my base. That sounds really fun, but I don't think we can make it. To answer your question from before about what we're doing here, I'm a YouTuber, and I document all the crazy adventures my friends and I go on. Yeah, if you've got some days to spare, you should hang out with us. You know, I could actually use a couple days to lay low after that encounter. Let's do it. From day seven to day eight, I, well, actually, you'll just have to click the link in the description to watch what I did on days seven and eight with Max and his friends. Our adventure is just in English though, but it was super fun. And if you watch, be sure to leave a comment on his video to let him know I sent you. From day 9 to day 10, I was on my way back to my base with some sheep as a gift from Richie. When I arrived, Spider Queen came running over to talk to me. I've been building, Zozo. Come, check it out. She'd been building a lot, in fact. One of the first things I'd seen was the statue she'd been working on to inspire me. I couldn't tell what it was yet, but I was very excited to find out. Do you have any ideas? Let me know down in the comments. And the statue wasn't all. She'd also been working on some new buildings and upgrades for the base itself, including a storage room for all of our gear, a training room for practicing our skills, and a furnace for smelting ore into ingots. I'm so glad to have you here, Spider Queen. And I'm grateful to have you here as a friend. You're the best friend I've ever had, Zozo. Last thing I did for the day was set up a basic sheep pen and went to bed. From day 11 to day 12, Spider Queen and I relaxed while she practiced her music. I've been wondering, why do you think Pigless Polly believes I'm her Spider-Man? How can there even be more than one Spider-Man? I've got a theory about that, actually. I think when you spawned, it created a dimensional rift that sent this universe's Spider-Man into your native dimension while bringing you here, like a big cross-dimensional swap. Whoa, that's wild. How can you know all this when you're just a one spider tribute fan? No offense, of course. I actually have a degree in transdimensional physics. It's more of a hobby thing, really. Being a queen tribute act is my real ambition. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to the beautiful Jacaranda Forest with a plan in mind. Defeat that dastardly Barry B. Benson, the mutated bee. He's gotta be around here somewhere. I mean, he's so aggro. I imagine he'll come looking for me. And I was right. After a little more searching, Barry the mutated bee ran in and prepared to attack me. There you are. You've been due for a good thrashing, Zozo. And I still haven't forgiven you for your trespasses against me earlier. I still don't fully understand what I did. But if we've got a fight, let's just get it over with and fight. 
Finally, you're making some sense. And so, our battle began. I battered him with my guitar until he submitted. But I decided against finishing him off because honestly, I felt sorry for him. Go talk to your ex-wife, Barry. You clearly have some pent-up anger issues and you're not gonna solve them by beating up random strangers. Yeah, you're right. Sorry for all the trouble, Zozo. And with that, he left. But my act of kindness and mercy gave me some XP to level up. Getting 30 hearts, getting bigger and stronger, and getting a web shooter, which I could use to shoot webs. About time. I wonder. Whoa, I can also ride the webs as they fly through the air. Awesome. At long last, some real Spider-Man powers. This is great. From day 16 to day 19, I decided that I couldn't battle every baddie with just a guitar. So I went down into the nearest mining cavern to find some iron ore. Spider-Man, Spider-Man wants his hands on some iron, man. And my catchy theme song worked because I did manage to find a vein of iron ore and immediately started mining it. This seems like about enough to make the tools I want. Time to head back to my base. But on the way out of the mining cave, I saw a dangerous zombie spoiner standing in my way. Wait, this is a perfect opportunity to try out my new web shooter. I started throwing down cobwebs, trapping the zombie spoiner in place, and slowing him down to a crawl. With him lodged in place, it was easy to finish him off with my rockin' guitar. Yeah, that power is gonna be really useful. After that, I went back to my base and smelted the ore in my furnace until I had just enough ingots to make a metal sword and a metal pickaxe, axe, and some boots. This has been an extremely successful excursion. From day 20 to day 22, I was having the most amazing dream when I was suddenly woken up by Spider Queen standing anxiously next to my bed. Zozo, I'm sorry to wake you up, but something really scary is happening. Oh no, what's that? I was playing Bohemian Rhapsody a little too loudly, and I think Pigless heard me. Long story short, she's standing outside. What? Now I think we need to fight her. It's too dangerous for you, Spider Queen. Stay in here. I'll go and face her alone. And that's exactly what I did. I got out of bed and ran out to battle Pigless, who was still wielding her terrifying mace. There you are, Spider-Man. Not so tough with all your colorful friends no longer around. It's time for you to meet your doom. I keep telling you, I'm not the Spider-Man you're looking for. I come from a different dimension. I'm the Ice Spider-Man. Well, even if you aren't my Spider-Man, I'll still settle for getting to destroy a Spider-Man. And you'll do just fine. If your mind's made up, then I guess we better fight. And we did, but this time I had a way better chance. I threw down some cobwebs immediately, trapping Pigless in place before pulling out my iron sword and going to town. In the end, she broke free from the cobwebs, but she seemed startled. You, you're stronger than I remember. Hmm, I don't have time for this. We'll battle again soon, and next time you won't be so lucky. She fled after that, leaving me feeling stronger and more confident than ever. If I keep getting stronger, I think I can finally take her. From day 23 to day 26, I spent some time at my base, calmly collecting myself and spinning together a new addition to my spider suit. I used the wool from the sheep I got from Richie and some emu feathers that were laying on the ground to weave some outback leggings. With these, I could move faster and dodge out of the way of projectiles. Now I've really got the agility of a spider. It wouldn't be perfect. There was only about a 45% chance I'd be able to avoid oncoming attacks, but it was the edge I would need in my next battle with Pigless. And if you think this adventure is getting wild, then you should search for more videos and see more of my Minecraft challenges. Just type ZO ZO into the search bar up above. From day 27 to day 31, while I was still hunkered down at the base in the Sika Woods, I noticed Spider Queen seemed to be struggling with her statue. What's wrong, Spider Queen? Sozo, I just feel so under pressure. It's pushing down on me. I want to get the statue finished, but I'm missing a very key component. Hey, it's okay. You've been doing great so far. Here, why don't I help you out? What's this component you need to add to your statue? I just need some redstone blocks. Say no more. I'll go and fetch some. Thank you, Zozo. I ventured off to track down large quantities of redstone, making my way towards the Twilight Valley. This place was a lot darker than the other areas I had visited. The shadows were the perfect cover for some bubble monsters to sneak up and ambush me. There he is. Get him. Pigless is ordered. Hey, hey, come on, guys. Surely there's a peaceful way around this. Pigless can't be paying you that much. It's not always about the money, Spider-Man. It's about the Mets, baby. Let's go. Get a home run. 
Jerry, quiet down. Sorry, he gets a little excited about baseball. Oh, hey, where'd he go? Over here, Bubble Brain. I turned the shadows to my advantage and struck the bubble monsters in place with my cobweb attacks. They tried to swipe at me from the spots they were stuck to, but a few swinging smashes with my slamming six strings and their bubbles were burst. And just my luck, nearby there was a large deposit of redstone ore, so I gathered it up for Spider Queen. From day 32 to day 35, I continued patrolling around the Twilight Valley for any more signs of trouble, along with any more useful resources I could bring back. And while I was wandering around, I overheard the sound of distressed wailing. Help! Oh, won't someone help me? I'm far too important to need to ask for help. Uh, hey there, who are you? Oh, oh, <laughs> what a rather humorous joke. Quite amusing, yes, imagine not knowing who I am. My, you've cheered me up somewhat, small spidery peasant. Uh, I wasn't kidding. I don't know who you are. Don't know? How insulting. I am royalty. I am the King Pig, pig-headed head of the pig-head monarchy. Oh, my bad. Are you needing help with something? Well, it's about time you offered. My benefactor, the rich mummy, has run afoul of a hairy troll. And since he provides me with a lion's share of his wealth, I'm distraught. He's not even written me into his will yet, so I won't get any of his gold if that troll smashes him. You, uh, want me to go save him? I am a superhero, after all. Oh, a hero of the common folk. How quaint. Yes, yes, on you go, Spider-Boy. It's Spider-Man! Ice Spider-Man! From day 36 to day 39, I searched the Twilight Valley for any signs of this rich mummy, and eventually came across my first sign of where he might be, a troll's mini base. I watched from a distance, and it looked like the hairy troll was guarding the front entrance. If I tried to just walk up, he could smash me to spider smithereens. So I had to think up a strategy. How was I going to get in there? I'd need to take the troll out, but attacking head on was a bad idea. Sneaking around the back? Uh, it could work, but it might take too long, and the rich mummy might be doomed if the troll got hungry before I could reach him. Think, Zozo, think! You can do whatever a spider can. Oh, could I climb in? I tried on a nearby tree, but I couldn't stick to it. No climbing up walls for me, that stinks. I could ride my web shooter, but he will spot me immediately. That's not gonna work either. Maybe my best option was to look for another way in. From day 40 to day 43, I made my way around the outskirts of the troll's mini base, and lucky for me, there was a back entrance. Inside, I found the rich mummy trapped in a cage. Who might you be? Oh no, oh, not with him, are you? Oh, ghastly, you must be his torturer. No, I'm Ice Spider-Man, I'm here to save you. Just keep it down, I need to clear the way ahead, then I'll come back for you. I snuck through the base and spotted the hairy troll. He didn't see me coming, so I used the element of surprise while I had it. I spun my webs to catch him in place, but he was strong enough to tear himself free. It barely slowed him down. He swung his mace at me, and I was luckily able to dodge out of the way just in the nick of time thanks to my outback leggings. I retaliated by swinging my guitar at him, but the hairy troll had a high resistance to rock. Thinking quick, I used my webs again, not to get him stuck, but to blind him. It worked! I could get close enough to bash the hairy troll with my guitar and defeated him! With the troll out of the way, I went back to free the rich mummy and led him back to the king pig. Ah, Reginald, so good to see you. Thank you for your assistance, spider peasant. You may leave my mighty presence now. <laughs> so much for grateful. From day 44 to day 49, I finally made my way back to base to deliver the redstone blocks that Spider Queen needed. This is perfect, exactly what I needed. Sozo, you make the rockin' world go round. It was no problem, Spider Queen. Can't wait to see what you do with it. It was then that I took a look around the base. The whole place was in a real sorry state. I decided now that I had a moment to spare, I'd dedicate some time to cleaning up and improving the base with some defensive upgrades. I built a sturdy perimeter wall to stop any intruders from getting in. By the time I was done, Spider Queen had something to show me. Ta-da! Open your eyes, look up to the sky, and see! Wow, that's really something, Spider Queen! Thanks, Zozo. It's not quite done, but it'll rock you when it's finished. From day 50 to day 53, I awoke to the sound of a struggle. Spider Queen was in trouble! Zozo, help! Help me! I want to break free! I've got to break free! I rushed into action, but as soon as I stepped out of my room, I was greeted by a gang of bubble monsters. Rise and shine, Ice Spider-Man! I didn't order room service, guys! It's on the house, no charge! Speaking of, 
boys, charge! Outside, Piglet had arrived, and she was sending in hordes of her bubble minions to attack. I hadn't even had breakfast yet, and now I have to fend off monsters with all of my might. Good thing I got in my eight hours last night. We got that spotty you're looking for, boss. You idiots, that's the musician! I wanted the little brat in blue pajamas, not leggy Mercury here. I was still battling the bubble monsters. By the time I had finally burst every last one of them, I had gained enough XP to level up. Wow, I've heard some people start their day with a workout, but this is insane. I now had 50 hearts and a new ability, Ice Blast. I was quickly becoming the coolest superhero around. There was one problem, I'd lost my musical guest in the process. From day 54 to day 57, I decided my only option was to return to the pompous King Pig and see if he knew where I could find Pigless. Huh, King Pig, Pigless. I wonder if the two of them are related. Yeah, probably just a coincidence. A short journey later, and I was back in the Twilight Valley. All I had to do was listen out for the sounds of stolen money bags, and sure enough, I found the monarch in front of his castle. Oh, you're back. Spider something, wasn't it? What if I seven sent for you? No, I'm here to ask you some questions. And since you didn't even thank me for saving your friend, I'd say you at least owe me a little bit of your time. My time is very valuable, like all the jewels and gemstones my servants brought me from far away. But I suppose I have a few moments to spare. My friend was taken by Pigless. I need to know where she is. Pigless? Pigless? Do not speak that name! You know each other then. She's a traitor to the crown, a deserter. She stormed out when she figured out she'd never be next in line to the throne. Gave her a real complex. She feels like she's better than everyone, but still not good enough if she can't rule. Wait, so does that make her your sister? Or no, cousin? Royalty is confusing, and it seems like a lot of fuss over nothing. Nothing? How dare you? We uphold a proud and noble tradition of theft. Uh, I mean, a tradition of tradition. So where is Pigless now? I don't keep in touch. She said some very hurtful things about me which weren't at all true. But last I heard, she resides in Red Rock Mountain, although the terrain is harsh, so you won't make it there in one piece with so little armor. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to follow up on the one useful piece of advice the King Pig had to offer and set about crafting myself some tough new armor. I scoured the area until I found a cave that led to a mine tucked away deep underground. And in the mine was plenty of what I needed, diamonds! Yes. I managed to find quite a few, but not enough to make the armor I needed. Not wanting them to go to waste, I forged them into a mighty diamond sword for stronger attacks and a matching pickaxe to make mining quicker and easier. I didn't have to wait long to test them out either. As it turned out, the mine belonged to a skeleton jackal, who was none too happy about me mining his diamonds. But it didn't take more than a few swings of my shiny new blade to settle our differences. From day 63 to day 66, I decided, rather than rushing straight back into danger and venturing up the treacherous terrain of the Red Rock Mountain, I hiked back to base to catch up on some rest. That way, I could be ready and refreshed when I set off to save Spider Queen. But speaking of Spider Queen, when I returned to base, I was met with a saddening sight. Her statue left unfinished now that she'd been captured. I thought about completing it in her honor, but it felt too much like admitting defeat before I'd even tried to save her. So instead, I left it as it was. She could have the satisfaction of finishing her hard work once I'd gotten her back in one piece. Knowing her, she was probably looking forward to it. I settled in for the night right in Spider Queen's bedroom. That way, I feel closer to her. Watch till the end of the video to see if we manage to save her. And why not click that subscribe button down below to stay tuned for future videos. From day 67 to day 70, I made my long journey towards Red Rock Mountain, scaling the dangerous Crimson Cliff Face and being careful to watch my step. One fall and it could be all over. As I descended from the peaks, I spotted a path. I followed until I saw the looming structure that Pigless had made into her base. And the whole place was massive and absolutely crawling with her minions. While I was still scoping it out from a distance, I thought back to my mission to save the rich zombie from that hairy troll and how I hadn't been able to enter through the front, but had better luck looking for a second way in. So I tried the same tactic again, heading around, scaling massive mountains, swinging from one hilltop to the other until I made it to the side of the base. I saw my entry point, an opening in the side. I aimed carefully and shot my web shooter to make my way in. And I landed right in the middle of a group of bubble monsters. It's the spider! Get this sucker, boys! Think of a way to roll out the welcome wagon. You treat all your guests like this? 
I swung my diamond sword and instantly slashed the nearest two, taking care of the next with a well-timed ice blast. Another hit from my sword, and he was shattered to pieces, while the others were quickly stuck fast with my webs right where I could strike at them. From day 71 to day 74, I snuck around the inside of Red Rock Mountain Base, making sure to keep out of the path of Piglis's many minions. But there was one enemy I recognized. Halt in the name of Piglis! Oh wait, it's you, Zozo! Barry? Barry B. Benson? Black and yellow, hello! Um, how are things with you and your wife? Hard to say, hard to say. We're still going through it. We're planning to go see a concert soon. She likes jazz. That's, that's good. So you're not gonna attack me? Nah, you're good. I just need to think about some things. It wasn't hard to see that his heart really wasn't all in on working for Pigless. It's a good job. I mean, there's not a lot of coverage, no dental, stuff like that. I'm gonna go. Oh, sure. Listen, I shouldn't tell you this, but check the chest in the room up ahead. There's some handy stuff in there. I went to investigate and found myself the proud owner of a full set of diamond armor. Whoa, Barry wasn't kidding. Now I can match the speed of a spider with the protection of diamonds. From day 75 to day 78, I explored a little more and found where Piglis had left Spider Queen trapped in a big cage. She'd clearly been singing to herself to keep her spirits up, but by now she was just yelling in case any of the bubble monsters were passing by. I just gotta get out of this prison cell. Someday I'm gonna be free. Oh, look, I want to break free. I've got to break free. Now? Please? Easy come, easy go. Will you let me go? Now's good for you then? Z Zozo! Oh, you're a sight for sore eyes! I've been so bored cooped up here. I want to get out and have fun. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. You have a bike? But you've got eight legs. Uh, I think it's a metaphor or something. Well, I've got just the thing to break you out. Gunpowder? Gelatine? Dynamite? With a laser beam? Close. It's a diamond sword. With a swing of the blade, I cracked open the lock and sent Spider Queen back to our base. She rushed off, and not a moment too soon, because Piglis had found me. You! First you intrude on my dimension, then you intrude on my home. I'm going to squash you at long last, puny spider! Piglis came at me, but I was able to freeze one of her feet in place, then web her hands to slow her down. I leaped close to swipe at her with my diamond sword, but just when I thought I had the upper hand, she knocked me back with a powerful hit. I decided to escape while I still could, and dashed out of the base. From day 79 to day 84, I was exhausted from the fighting, so the Spider Queen offered to give me a ride, which was really nice of her. We managed to make our way back to safety, but little did I realize that Piglis had had enough. That little wretch! How dare he try to defy my right to rule! He and the rest of this overworld will soon see that they shouldn't have messed with Piglis! With that, Piglis used a powerful potion to make herself even stronger. Now she'd be an even tougher fight when it came time for me to face off with her again. From day 85 to day 89, we arrived back at base, and my good friend Spider Queen, whose ride was surprisingly comfy, was super happy to be free from Piglis's cage. Piglis thought she could stop me and spit in my eye. But we did it. We are the champions, my friend. We sure are. Look, I managed to swipe this from one of the guards at Piglis's base. I thought I could use it to break free, but instead, I was just screaming, let me out. Anyway, I think you should have it. You're gonna take on the world someday. Spider Queen handed me the upgrade. It was a fire aspect and sharpness too, enchantment. I immediately went to apply it to my diamond sword to deal some extra damage. Now, I had the power of ice, fire, and spiders on my side. Once I was done improving my sword, I returned to find Spider Queen putting the final finishing touches on her statue. Hey, yo are you ready? Hey, are you ready for this? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? And may I present to you my masterpiece? I call it Zohemian Rhapsody. Zohemian? Named after you, of course, Sozo. I can't keep living without, living without, living without you by my side. I like it. Makes me feel ready to take on Piglas one last time. Well, you better be careful. I saw she had a whole cabinet of potions to make her stronger. The bubble monsters steal them from King Pig's cellar and bring them back to her. Huh, maybe I can intercept them and take a potion for myself. That ought to level the playing field. And that way you'll keep on fighting to the end. From day 90 to day 94, I headed back towards the Twilight Valley and followed a trail that the bubble monsters had left from the King Pig's palace to a small camp they had set up nearby. Just like Spider Queen had told me, they had a potion of power, but it must have been the last one left. Yep, that's the last one left. 
Hey boss, question. If Piglet's had us stealing all these here potions, why doesn't she give each of us one? Then we'd all be a tougher army and she could overthrow the King Pig. We're not about that kind of talking. The potions are for Piglet. I webbed the closest bubble monster in place, slashing the other with my newly enchanted fire aspect diamond sword. The heat popped them in an instant, and before the other two could get free, I cut them down too. I retrieved the last potion of power, but waited before I drank it. The King Pig's palace was only a short walk away, and maybe I could get one last favor from him. From day 95 to day 97, I walked right up to the King Pig's throne and showed him what I had recovered. You know what this is? Why, that's an excellent vintage. One glass is worth the yearly wages of my entire staff. You'd better put that back in the cellar with the others before I have you executed. There are no more others. Pigless had been sending her minions in to steal them from right under your nose. Pigless? Something must be done about that treasonous traitor. I'll take care of Pigless, but only if you let me keep this potion and be way nicer to your servants. In fact, stop hoarding all this fancy expensive stuff. Learn to share. Sh share? What is that? I'm not familiar with this common folk slang. You have a whole library here. Look it up in the dictionary. After a few moments of learning what sharing was, the King Pig returned. Preposterous! If I, how do I pronounce it, shared, I wouldn't have all my power and riches. But that might not be such a bad thing, if even a fraction of your wealth might improve the lives of other people. So if I, say for example, just gave you this netherite armor, then how would that improve anyone's life? Well, with that, I could take down Pigless, which is also what you want, isn't it? Yes, but confound it! What commoner wizardry is this? You've confused me. I need to go lie down. Here, this is yours, I think. With that, the King Pig handed over an entire set of netherite armor. Now I had the most powerful protection against Pigless. On day 98, I returned to my base to make the final preparations I needed to ahead of my big battle with Pigless. I had my diamond sword at the ready, enchanted with a powerful fire aspect for added flaming damage. I had my netherite armor on, ready to defend me against oncoming damage. Plus, I had my ice Spider-Man powers at the ready. I even tested out my ice blasts and cobwebs, and they were ready to go. Before leaving though, I stopped by Spider Queen's room to tell her how to get to Max's neighborhood. If I didn't make it back, she would need a safe place to live. Now there was just one question. What was going to happen next? If you think you know, then leave your answers in the comments. And while you're there, tell us what video you'd like to see next. On day 99, I made my final journey to Red Rock Mountain and stopped just outside the entrance to Piglet's base. It was quiet, too quiet. All her minions seemed to have run off in fear. If they were that scared of her new more powerful form, then I needed to be prepared. I drank the potion of power and this upgraded me to my final form. I now had a full 100 hearts and the last of my ice Spider-Man powers were finally unlocked. I could climb walls. Ready for anything, I headed inside to find Pigless waiting for me. She was much bigger and stronger than before and way more vicious. I was meant to rule this silver world. It's my birthright. And I won't have you meddling in my destiny any longer. Oh, I don't think so, Pigless. The battle was on. Pigless hurled a javelin at me, but thanks to my super spider agility and my outback leggings, I dodged right out of the way, then climbed up the nearby wall so I was out of her reach. From my vantage point, I fired ice blasts and cobwebs at her, trying to slow her down. Get down from there! She threw another javelin, and I went to get out of the way, but I timed it wrong and fell. I quickly picked myself up and got back into the fight. It was the toughest of battles, but Pigless seemed to be overexerting herself. I managed to keep dodging away, climbing the walls, and using my webs to slow her down, until finally I landed an ice blast. This, this is too cold. Don't worry, my sword has a fire aspect enchantment. It should help turn up the heat. With a mighty strike, I had done it. Pigless was defeated at last. On day 100, instead of returning to my base, I returned victorious to Max's neighborhood, where I was immediately greeted by Spider Queen, as well as Max and his friends. Another one bites the dust. Great work, Zozo. I knew you were gonna be a big man someday. Well, I couldn't have done it without you, Spider Queen. Oh, you're too kind. You're the champion here, Zozo. Spider Queen really livened the place up with her music, but we're glad to see you made it back in one piece. Me too, and everyone should click the link in the description to check out the adventure we went on together. Then, much to my surprise, the King Pig also showed up. 
Zozo, my boy, you didn't tell me that sharing also came with this delightful feeling. I don't really know what it's called, but seeing the smiles on my servants' faces give me one of those, uh, what, what, what are they called? Emotions? You mean you feel happy? That's the ticket, and I've been reading up too. Did you know that all the traditions of the Pighead Marquis are centuries old? It seems so silly to still be upholding them. So what did you do? Oh, I gave my palace and all my riches to my servants. Except they aren't my servants anymore. Just people. And so am I. Look at me. One of the people. Now, who is your charming eight-legged friend here? Well, you might be a former king pig, but she's Spider Queen. And we will, we will rock you. On day one, I spawned in as an ice spider, an arachnid as cold as the arctic reaches. All eight of my legs are here, but why am I so little? I'm only a baby spider! That's when I realized that I was trapped inside of a magic circle. An evil looking necromancer stood on the outside, casting a terrible spell. A spider of ice, it will suffice. So says me, necromancer Bryce. Lights swirled all around me, and the entire world shook. But when it stopped, I felt like I was able to move. Great! I better get out of here while I can! I tried to scurry away, but Bryce the Necromancer blocked my path. Not so fast there, Ice Spider. Your part to play is done, so now I'll destroy you and complete the spell. Hey, I have a name, you know. It's Zozo, and I don't like it when people say they're going to destroy me. Oh, it's nothing personal. That magic spell I just cast is going to destroy the entire world 100 days from now. What? The entire world? You do realize that doesn't make it better, right? But it does make it destroyed. The ritual also says that I should sacrifice the ice spider used in the spell for best results. Well, it's not going to be this ice spider. I'm leaving, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna find a way to counteract your spell. I bolted for it as fast as my eight legs could carry. Instead of chasing after me, the necromancer Bryce just laughed wickedly to himself. Easier said than done, my arachnid friend. The world's destruction is close at hand. On day two, I managed to get far enough away from the necromancer Bryce that I could take it easy. I looked around in wonder at the glowing ancient forest around me. I also noticed that I had 10 hearts and that my hunger gauge was lowering fast. It looks like running for my life from a destruction-happy evil necromancer really works up an appetite. I searched around until I found a tree that had apples in it for me to take. Then I ate the apples until my hunger meter was full again. Surviving all alone in this world as a baby spider isn't so bad. I'm really getting the hang of it. I wasn't alone for long though, as I saw a couple of skeleton vanguards appear out from between the trees. There you are, Ice Spider. We shall get rid of you for our master, the Necromancer Bryce. He must really want to sacrifice me if he's sending skeletons to do his bidding. I tried to fend off the skeleton vanguards, but my spider bites didn't have much of an effect on creatures made of bone. Give up, spider. The world is doomed, and your sacrifice will seal its fate. The mobs kept attacking, bringing me down to my last few hearts. I thought I was doomed. But then, an energy blast distracted the skeleton vanguards and made them run away. Out of nowhere, an illusioner appeared. I realized immediately that they must have been the one who cast the spell. Follow me, little ice spider. I'll take you to my camp. We'll be safer there. You saved my life, so I guess I can trust you. On day three, the illusioner took me to his campsite and cast a protective illusion barrier around both of us so that the mobs wouldn't find us. You're pretty good at casting spells, illusioner. Please, call me Alan. Illusioner Alan. Okay, Alan, you're pretty good at casting spells. Thank you for saying that, but unfortunately, there are mages far more powerful than me in the world, and some of them are using their gifts for evil. You mean like Necromancer Bryce? Is it true that his spell will end the world? Not if we good mages have anything to say about it. Soon after, another mage arrived at the campfire. This one was a wind caller with the power to, well, call wind. I'm wind caller Windy. I'm here to see the ice spider. That's me. I'm Ice Spider Zozo. Oh, the winds are truly blowing in our favor. You, my amicable arachnid, might be the key to saving the entire world from destruction. Necromancer Bryce's ritual can be stopped by a more powerful spell as long as he doesn't sacrifice an ice spider. So as long as I'm alive, there's a chance that you mages will be able to stop him. We'll need your help too. You can battle his henchmen and travel to places which would be too dangerous for us. You can count on me. I might still be a baby spider, but I won't let the entire world down. From day four to day five, I began to make use of the trees around me to gather wood for a wooden pickaxe. 
because my starting area was a forest, it didn't take long to have enough to craft the tool. But wood wouldn't be good for long if I could do better. I mined into the ground with my wooden pickaxe for some stone and quickly upgraded to a stone pickaxe. With the new and improved stone tool, I was able to gather even more stone to use for building and crafting. First, I made a stone sword to defend myself with. Next, I started building a strong shelter where I could stay safe from Necromancer Bryce and his undead minions. Illusioner Alan had chosen to come with me. His illusion spells would help keep me safe while I built the base. Thanks for all your help so far, Alan. Remember, Zozu, do not rely on magic. It cannot keep every mob away. I soon understood what he meant when a skeleton appeared and interrupted my building. Good thing I crafted that stone sword. I drew my weapon and brought down the skeleton with a cup of wax. My victory against the skeleton made me stronger and more experienced. And because of that, I grew out of my baby mode into a regular sized ice spider with 30 hearts. I can shoot ice blasts now. That is more like it. From day six to day eight, I was out exploring in the nearby gravelly mountains when I saw a friendly gorilla being attacked by a slime ball. Get away from me, you slime ball. The slime ball didn't answer. It just bounced and got slime everywhere. You may be slimy, but this ice spider isn't so helpless anymore. I hit the slime ball with my stone sword over and over. It did a good amount of damage, but I was taking damage the longer I stayed in contact with the slime ball. I retreated back to a safe distance and shot the slime ball with an ice blast. It froze the mob solid, so I was able to get in a few more hits with my stone sword while it was immobilized. I repeated this two or three times with more ice blasts until the slime ball was defeated. Once the battle was over, the gorilla cheered and ran up to greet me. Burr, I was cold just watching that, but I'm glad you're on my side. Of course. I, Ice Spider Zozo, am all about saving others. You're definitely the nicest ice mob I've met. Say, do you think you could talk to the other one I know and tell him to stop trying to freeze me? Sure thing. I'll let him know that's not nice. He's just over here in another part of the mountains. From day 9 to day 10, the gorilla showed me to the lair of the Icy Creeper, a powerful ice mob that seemed to like to cause trouble. The gorilla seemed worried for me. That's how I knew Icy Creeper would be trouble. Are you sure you could duck him out of being mean, Zozo? I can certainly try. I left Gorilla behind and approached the Icy Creeper. His attention was on me immediately, but he didn't speak. It looked like I would need to talk first. Hey, I'm Ice Spider Zozo. I heard you've been trying to freeze the gorilla, and they'd like you to stop. Well, that's very nice, but I'm not gonna. I'll freeze anyone I want. That's so rude. What did the gorilla ever do to you? Nothing, but this is a cold world, and I'm one cold, tough customer. If that gorilla doesn't like it, he can go to another mountain. Don't make me fight you, Icy Creeper. I'd like to see you try. I fired my ice blast at the Icy Creeper, but it seemed like he was even colder than me because it barely did any damage. His own ice blast took off a bunch of my hearts. In a battle between ice creatures, I was definitely the loser for now. I ran back to the gorilla, sad that I couldn't defeat the Icy Creeper. I promised Gorilla that I'd let him stay in my base for now and come back to the gravelly mountains to defeat Icy Creeper at a later time. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base and began renovating the living space so that the gorilla had a place to live. I used a lot of stone bricks so it wouldn't be too different from the mountain he had left behind. Once I had built the room, I went to see the gorilla and showed him where he could stay. Thanks for letting me stay here, Zozo. I thought you could use some more storage space, so I did a bit of building on my own. It turned out that the gorilla really had built a room that was perfect for storing extra items. He also built a furnace that would heat up the room where he and the mages would be staying. Oh yeah, I guess you guys need to stay warm. Either way, that's very impressive work. I call it the home away from home. Oh, I hope I get to see the mountains again before the world ends. It's not going to end. I'll stop it. I hope so. That necromancer Bryce has been plotting world destruction for a long time, actually. He's tried all sorts of spells to do it, and they've never worked. This one might, though, and the idea of that is really scary. It did sound scary, and I wasted no time getting better materials to help defend myself in case Bryce showed up. Down in the mining area of the base, I went digging for some iron to upgrade my tools. I found some iron ore, which I smelted into iron ingots, then crafted into an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. Back on the surface, I tamed some sheep from the nearby glowing ancient forest and built a farm for them. If that furnace fails, there's always wool sweaters. From day 13 to day 15, I sought out Illusioner Allen for some more advice on how to complete Necromancer Bryce's challenge. I want to save the world as soon as I can, Allen. Is the spell ready yet? If only magic were that simple, Zozu. 
The truth is that Bryce's destruction spell is linked to you now. The only way to weaken it is for you to become stronger. How do I do that? When you defeated Bryce's skeleton henchman before, some of the spell's magic transferred into you. If you can defeat a more powerful one, it could happen again. I went back to the gravelly mountains in the hopes of finding another undead mob to fight. Come and get me! I don't fear you, skeletons! As if answering my call to battle, a skeleton vanguard came charging across the mountain terrain towards me. Spider of ice! Spider of ice! The time has come for sacrifice! I hit the advancing skeleton vanguard with an ice blast, which slowed the undead down. I was able to hit him with another before he got into melee range. Time to get a taste of my new weapon. At that point, I brought out my iron sword and slashed the skeleton vanguard with some powerful hits. The skeleton vanguard crumbled and dropped a health potion to boot. This potion must contain some more of Bryce's magic. I drank the potion and felt my power increase dramatically. My number of hearts doubled and became 60 and I gained the magical ability to turn invisible like see-through ice. From day 16 to day 19, I continued my exploration into a brand new part of the world that I'd never seen before, the Great Lake Isles. As I crawled around this breathtaking new biome, I came across an abandoned book that contained information about the destruction spell that Necromancer Bryce had cast. A spell of destruction cast by a necromancer must be confirmed with the sacrifice of an ice spider. For this reason, an ice spider that survives the casting of the spell can prevent the destruction of the world by being at the center of a spell of life, which is made to protect the world. I wasn't sure exactly what that meant, but it sounded like there was a way to turn the tide of destruction. I excitedly began to leave the Great Lake Isles when some more skeleton vanguards ambushed me to try and get me to be sacrificed. Spider of ice, spider of ice, the time has come for s Yeah, 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 sacrifice. You creeps must have followed me from the mountains. I used my iron sword and I pelted the mobs with ice blasts until they were all destroyed. From day 20 to day 22, I realized that my powers were far stronger now that I had grown into a bigger ice spider. I tested my metal against some specters in the glowing ancient forest, chopping them down with my iron sword. They weren't that difficult to defeat, but the fact that they were here meant that bad omens were on the horizon. Dead becoming more common could be a sign of world destruction being on its way. I did some more mining for iron in the base cavern and grabbed enough ore to make the ingots for an iron chest plate. Now that I'm this much stronger, I bet I could stand up to the Icy Creeper. I returned to the Icy Creeper's lair in the gravelly mountains to confront the mob with my new abilities and gear. Have you learned how cold the world is yet, Zozo? No, I have learned that the world has good people in it that don't deserve to be frozen or destroyed. I fired my Icy Blast at the Icy Creeper, and this time, I was the one dealing damage. I had become a colder, more powerful being. Never freeze the gorilla or anyone else ever again. All right, Zozo, I give. I'll be nice. The icy Creeper ran away, never to be mean again and never to be seen again. Upon driving away from that other ice mob, I saw a flashback to Bryce as a younger necromancer just learning his first spells. The world is a cold and cruel place. I know. I'll destroy it so nobody has to live in a cold, cruel world. Guess he was similar to the Icy Creeper in a couple of ways. If only he knew that the world wasn't as cold and cruel as he thought it was. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the base, feeling victorious. I made a beeline for the gorilla to give him the good news. I taught that Icy Creeper a lesson he won't forget anytime soon. I promise you that you won't be having any trouble with him now. Wow, you are one heroic ice spider, Zozo. I'm really checking my prejudices right now. Also, I made you a gift. In case you didn't notice it on the way in, I made a perimeter wall to defend the base. Somehow, I totally had missed the perimeter wall. It was awesome and would do a great job at repelling the roving hordes of the undead. The base is well defended. Maybe now it's time to make sure my body is better defended. I went back to the mining cavern and collected up some more iron ore that I then took back to my base and smelted into iron ingots. I used these to make the rest of my armor set. You may not be able to see the armor on me, but believe me, it's there. From day 27 to day 31, I returned to the Great Lake Isles, wanting to make sure that I'd wiped out the Skeleton Vanguard Scourge completely. The more territory I can take back from the Necromancer Bryce, the less power and resources he has to complete his dark ritual. And it seems like my earlier work had paid off, because I couldn't see a Skeleton Vanguard anywhere. Instead, what I found was a large and smart-looking golem. Hello there, good sir. Say, I've heard quite a bit about a certain ice spider lately. Your name wouldn't happen to be Zozo, would it? Um, that depends. What would you do if I was Zozo? 
I congratulate you. I'm the Librarian Golem. I travel across the overworld, giving books to those who need them. And the skeleton vanguards working for that blasted necromancer had gotten in the way of my very important mission for far too long. If you are Zozo, then you are responsible for many needy people getting the books they so crave. Well, in that case, I am Zozo. Why don't you come back to my base with me? You seem like you'd be a valuable ally. Of course, as long as there's a place where I can read. I returned to my base with the librarian golem and constructed a new room for him to sleep in. After completing it, I realized how dull and drab the base looked. It needed a personal touch. I harvested some wool from my sheep farm and turned them into a bunch of cool banners that I hung up around the different buildings of my base. Looking snazzy. But my joy was short-lived as Illusioner Allen ran in with frantic news. Zozo, you need to come with me immediately. Windcaller Wendy is under attack. From day 32 to day 35, Illusioner Allen and I ran as fast as we could to reach the campfire in the glowing ancient forest where the Windcaller liked to hang out. But by the time we arrived, it was already too late. A vicious gang of skeleton vanguards had already outnumbered and destroyed him. No! <laughs> we serve our master well. Everyone who attempts to defend you will be destroyed, Zozo. Nobody will stand in the way of your sacrifice. We will destroy this entire world. Not if I have anything to say about it. Powered by pure rage, I went in there with all my weapons and powers and wiped out every single one of the skeleton vanguards. In the end, all that was left was myself and Illusioner Allen. This is bad, Zozo. The Windcaller was a powerful mage and an asset to our operation. Now that she is gone, the danger grows significantly. But we can't give up, Alan. If we give up, then nobody will stop Necromancer Bryce. We need to fight back against him with everything we have. From day 36 to day 39, I went out to the gravelly mountains to wander around and collect my thoughts. I was afraid about everything that had happened, but I couldn't show it in front of everyone who was working for me. Necromancer Bryce and his men are way more dangerous than I thought. My thoughts were interrupted when I ran into an incredibly strange creature, a melon golem, which I didn't even know was a thing. What? You never see a melon golem before? You don't like melons or something? Oh, no, no, I, I love melons. I've just never seen a melon golem before. I'm sorry if I upset you. If you have a favor you need doing, I'd be happy to see to it and give you a hand. Well, now that you mention it, there was an obsidian golem who was giving me some real trouble. Would you mind taking care of him before he hurts me or anyone else? Of course, I'll get right to it. I turned on my invisibility powers and used it to search through the gravelly mountains until I discovered the obsidian golem. I used the element of surprise and approached him from behind, attacking him with everything I had. In the end, I managed to defeat him after a tough battle. Then I returned to the melon golem and told him that his bully was gone. Hey, that's great news. I used to be able to trust the other golems, but a lot of them defected to the necromancer Bryce because most of them are hardy enough to survive the cold. So some golems are working with the necromancer now? That's not good news. You point out the obvious a lot, you know. From day 40 to day 43, I returned back to my base, pleasantly surprised by some improvements that Illusioner Allen had made to the base. Zozo, I've made very good friends with the librarian golem. He's a wonderful chap, and we've been doing lots of discussions around the arcane arts. So I installed a sizable collection of bookshelves and couches so he can really enjoy himself here. It's incredibly wholesome that you two have become such good friends. And he's not the only friend I'd like to stay here. I improved the base by adding a barracks, so I could invite more of my illusion of friends. The more mages we have at the base, the easier it will be to defend you from the necromancer. That sounds like a good idea to me, Alan. Not long after, a small group of other illusioners arrived, and I greeted them and escorted them to their rooms. Not long after, the librarian golem approached me with a new quest. Zozo, as you may have heard on the grapevine, or perhaps the melon vine, some golems defected from the overworld and joined up with that dastardly necromancer. Two in particular are the endstone golem and the netherite golem out in the Great Lake Isles. Perhaps if you're able to defeat him, it will weaken the necromancer's power in another territory. That's an awesome idea, librarian golem. I'll set off immediately. From day 44 to day 49, I set off into the Great Lake Isles to find one of the evil golems that had been working for Necromancer Bryce. I want to reduce the power of the Necromancer's spell in whatever way that I can. I thought I saw the glow of magic from one of the islands and made a stealthy approach. To my surprise, it wasn't an endstone golem at all, but Necromancer Bryce himself. He was muttering something, so I got closer to hear what it was. 
This pathetic world does not deserve mercy. It only deserves cold destruction, and my spell will be that destruction. Soon, the hastening will be upon us. Couldn't let him stand there and say such terrible things. Take that back, you dastardly necromancer. Oh, it's you. You're the ice spider that dares to defy me. It seems my undead have thus far been unable to sacrifice you. Why do you need to sacrifice me so badly anyway? What's in it for you if the entire world is destroyed? Destroying the entire world is a thankless job, but somebody has to do it. Anyway, I've got a brand new caliber of minion now. Prepare to meet my netherite golem. The necromancer Bryce vanished into a cloud of magical smoke, and in his place, a netherite golem rose to its full towering height. Greetings. I am the netherite golem, and I will be sacrificing today. The other golems told me that baddies like you are bad news. Put up your big netherite dukes, and let's have a good clean fight, said the spider to the golem. I ice blasted my opponent and scurried around, avoiding his attacks. I used my invisibility to sneak in close and attack with my iron sword. The netherite golem was very strong, and he managed to hit me a couple times, dealing many hearts of damage. But I had hearts to spare now, and this fight was far from over. From day 50 to day 53, we briefly stopped to talk. You're going to be sacrificed, Ice Spider. I'm going to crack you like ice, and then squash you like a spider. Oh yeah? Well, you're a netherite golem, and, uh, never mind, I can't think of anything. I fired off a couple of ice blasts, then I used my iron sword to hit the netherite golem. With one more ice blast, I froze the netherite golem and brought the fight to a close with a sword strike. The netherite golem dispersed, leaving behind some mystical diamonds, which were stronger than any material I had gathered thus far. Better hang on to these so I can make a powerful tool out of these diamonds later. With the netherite golem defeated, I felt some of Necromancer Bryce's magic leaving the Great Lake Isles. From day 54 to day 57, I found the other evil golem that had chosen to serve Necromancer Bryce, the Endstone Golem, the exact golem that the library golem had sent me out to fight. This mean Endstone fighting machine was just as tough as the netherite golem I had fought before, so I knew I had to use similar strategies to take it down. Ice Spider Zozo, Golem Slayer! My invisibility proved to be a great way of avoiding attacks, and a mixture of Ice Blast and Iron Sword attacks sealed the deal! Both of the Golem Defectors have been defeated now. I can feel the Great Lake Isles are peaceful now. I returned to my base in the glowing ancient forest so that I could tell the tale of my victory to the Library Golem. Well done, Ice Spider Zozo. Without his Golems, Necromancer Bryce has lost a major facet of his evil forces. The destruction of the entire world is that much closer to being avoided. I'm just doing my part to stop the spell. In anticipation of your return, I did some research into the original spellbooks that contain the destruction spell. It says that the ice spider needed for the spell must come from the ice spikes biome. Have you ever been there before, Zozo? Not that I can recall, but if it's my homeland, maybe I can learn something more about the spell by going there someday. From day 58 to day 62, I used the mystical diamonds that had been dropped by the netherite golem to make myself a diamond sword. Once crafted, the librarian gave me a Frostwalker enchantment book to enchant my new diamond sword with frost. What a neat enchantment, and very fitting for an ice spider. I guess magic comes naturally to me. Because of my new sword, I was inspired to seek out more diamonds down in the mine. Using my iron pickaxe, I dredged up a few more diamonds and made myself a diamond pickaxe. I decided that was enough mining for now, and I came back to see that the living area looked much nicer, and there was even a brand new fireplace. Illusioner Alan was standing by the fireplace, feeling its warmth. It looks amazing here. Is this an illusion? I'm always telling you, Zozo, magic can't do everything. These changes to the base are 100% real. Wow, thanks, Alan. Building this base was such a great idea. I really like living here, so I'm glad I could make it better for everyone. From day 63 to day 66, I was doing some more diamond mining when the gorilla who lives in my base came to visit me. Hey, Zozo, the librarian golem told me that you're originally from the Icebergs. I actually know how to get there. You do? Well, that's great. I have been meaning to take a trip out there at some point. I'll give you the directions. Maybe you'll find out if you've got any family out there. Following the gorilla's directions, I made my way to the ice spikes. I didn't see any ice spiders, but maybe I would meet a friendly face if I looked around. But the first face I saw didn't appear to be that friendly. It was a mountaineer with a wicked gleam in his eyes. I'm warning you, buddy. You don't want to mess with this ice spider. I have the home field advantage. I don't want to fight you. 
This gleam in my eye is the gleam of adventure. I'm Mountain Air Monty, and I'm looking to climb the tallest peak in the ice spikes. The tallest peak? I bet I could see everything from up there. Count me in. Perfect! With an ice spider helping me up, I'll be able to get to the top of the tallest peak in no time! From day 67 to day 70, I joined Mountaineer Monty, and we both climbed around on the ice spikes together, searching for the tallest peak. How will we know if the ice spike that we're climbing is the tallest or not, Monty? We won't know until we get to the top. Keep on crawling on these walls, ice spider! We went higher and higher until we found a ledge on the side of an even taller peak. Could this be the one? That's when a leap leaf jumped down from the upper ledges and started to attack. I fired an ice blast at the mob, but it dodged away. This leap leaf was faster than I expected, so I'd have to outsmart it. I turned invisible and waited for the leap leaf to land on the ground. I dashed in and hit it with my diamond sword, dealing a bunch of damage. The moment it jumped, I fired an ice blast directly at it, defeating it for good. Mountaineer Monty was impressed with my win. That was great! And also Leap Leafs only live on the tallest peak, so we must be there! Let's keep on climbing so we can find out! Within a few minutes, we had risen to the top of the entire Ice Spikes biome. This was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in all my days as an ice spider! Thank you for being here with me! Down below, I saw what looked like the lair of a necromancer, a wicked and terrible base! Necromancer Bryce must be here in the Ice Spikes! Did he find me here? From day 71 to day 74, I descended the peak of the tallest mountain and began to travel through the ice spikes in the direction of the evil lair. I never expected my history with Bryce would go back so far. I need to find out why his lair is here, what happened to the other ice spiders, and of course, how I can save the world from destruction. And if you want to help me save the world, remember to search ZOZO to find more of my adventures. Make sure to tell me what you want me to play as next. Down at the base of the mountain, I wandered through a snowy blizzard, only to be confronted by Necromancer Bryce! You've returned home, Ice Spider Zozo, but it's not your home anymore! It's my home, and soon there will be nobody home in the entire world! Your destruction spell will never work, Bryce! Not as long as I survive without being sacrificed! I drew my sword and turned invisible, waiting for an opportunity to strike! Necromancer Bryce only laughed. He was not threatened by me at all. Ha ha ha, foolish Zozo. You don't understand what it means that I am here in the ice spikes. It means that I've already sacrificed another ice spider. My spell is secure. I froze in place, not from the cold, but from the shock of what Bryce had said. No, you already sacrificed an ice spider, you evil monster. Bryce turned toward the spell and blasted me with a powerful spell that took off almost all of my heart. He was about to fire off another, so I ran away as fast as I could. From day 75 to day 78, I scurried back to the base and immediately shut myself away in the coldest room of the base. I had failed. The whole point of going to the ice spikes was to learn more about my origin. But now, I had learned something that made me feel completely hopeless. The entire world really was going to be destroyed, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. Never say never, Zozo. It was the librarian golem. They had come to visit me in my time of regret. But all of the other ice spiders are gone. Necromancer Bryce sacrificed them. I don't think that's exactly what has happened, Zozo. Bryce was trying to catch you off guard so he could sacrifice you. He still needs you for his place, and when he comes for you, we'll be ready. The librarian golem showed me a watchtower that had been installed on the base. It would be an ideal countermeasure to any intruding undead sent by Bryce. Thanks, library golem. And you're right, the world isn't doomed yet. Later on, I consulted Illusioner Allen to see what magical spells he had been working on during my travels. Zozo, I have used all of my magic to create this Kaitha. It is a weapon that will make you unstoppable in battle. Thank you, that's exactly what I need. The moment I took the Kaitha, I felt a great surge of power within me. I grew into the ultimate ice spider, the true king of the ice spikes. I had 100 hearts and the ability to warp short distances, combining that ability with my invisibility to really catch enemies off guard. From day 79 to day 84, I made my way back to the ice spikes, trusting that the transformation brought on by Illusioner Allen's spell would give me the ultimate power, and that the library golem wasn't wrong about there being more to learn about my past. In my mighty ice spider form, nothing in the ice spikes could rival my strength. Some specters tried to swoop down and challenge me, but I effortlessly destroyed them with my ice blast. I traveled some more through the cold biome of the ice spikes, eventually finding an Isolager native to this region. Hello there, Isolager. Please, call me Isolager Ike. 
It's quite nice to meet a spider of ice. There used to be a lot more of you protecting the ice spikes. So I've heard. That was before the necromancer sacrificed them. Oh, there was no sacrifice. Your ancestors fought against him bravely, down to the last spider. I kept one of their helmets, too. You should have it. Ike gave me a diamond helmet, which I proudly equipped. I guess there really was more to the story than I thought. From day 85 to day 89, my base was attacked by the skeleton vanguard. I arrived just in time to fend them off with weapons and ice blasts. Spider of ice, spider of ice, the time has come for sacrifice. Ha, that confirms it. You still need a sacrifice. And I'm the last spider standing. You'll never take me out. With the confidence I had developed in my ultimate ice spider form, I demolished the skeleton vanguard one by one until the last of them went running back to the ice spikes. Spider of Ice, your sacrifice will now be done by Necromancer Bryce. I'd like to see him try. I chased the skeleton vanguard to the edge of my base, where he kept running onward. It was there that I met a fungus thrower who was standing next to a dugout pool of water. Oh, please, our spider so-so. My swimming pool is way too warm. Can you provide an ice blast to cool it off? Why, certainly, my fungus throwing friend. I shot the pool with an ice blast, freezing it over. Oops, sorry, now it's more of an ice rink. No, I like this better. I'll call my friends and we'll play some hockey. From day 90 to day 94, I followed the skeleton vanguard through the ice spikes all the way to the necropolis where necromancer Bryce would be waiting for me. Bryce, Bryce, we need your advice. As the skeleton vanguard approached the necropolis, it was obliterated by an attack from an armored pillager. Never send a skeleton to do my job. And what is your job? Killing spiders by the dozen. Me and the rest of my pillager crew fought the ice spiders in this area back when they dared to defy Necromancer Bryce. You mean that it was you who wiped out all the rest of the ice spiders and you're working for Bryce? I'm going to freeze on you. I fired several ice blasts, but the armored pillager tanked them all and hit me with the same powerful attack it used to destroy the skeleton vanguard. It dealt a decent amount of damage, so I warped away to avoid taking more. I faced many ice spiders just as big as you. But you've never faced me. Gathering my courage, I warped back and swung my diamond sword into the armored pillager, returning the damage I took and then some. From day 95 to day 97, the armored pillager still wouldn't let up, and I was starting to see that his claims of taking down all the other ice spiders wasn't all talk. My ice blasts weren't very effective, so I mostly relied on my sword strikes to deal damage. My warp and invisibility powers helped me dodge most of the armored pillager's attacks so that I could hold onto my hearts. Why can't you let me crush you like those other worthless ice spiders? It's time you learned that those lives you trampled were never worthless. I warped all around the armored pillager and barraged him with sword attacks until he collapsed at long last. Darn it, you have beaten me. Truth is, you spiders fought very well. I was the only survivor among the pillagers. If you lost everyone too, why are you being such a mean guy about it? We could have talked this out. Necromancer Bryce was going to destroy the world anyway. We thought we had to listen to him, or he'd destroy us first. That Bryce is ruthless beyond anything you've seen. After he hired us pillagers to wipe out the spiders, he had them save one remaining ice spider egg so that he could use the ice spider that hatched for his destruction spell. That ice spider must have been you. The armored pillager died, leaving behind a key to the lair. At that moment, I realized I had avenged my people. Well, almost. Bryce stole me away, planned to use me for his spell, and destroy the world I've only now come to know. I will stop him! On day 98, I returned to the base to heal my injuries from the battle with the armored pillager. So much had happened since I started my journey, and we were only a couple days from the day that the destruction spell would end the world. But the words that carried me all this way still rang in my ears. As long as I survive, it isn't over. I spoke to the librarian Golem, who was also hopeful about our chances of stopping the destruction spell. No sacrifice was made, and if you defeat Bryce, he'll never be able to cast another destruction spell. This could be your chance to save the entire world. I will do it, for the world and for all the ice spiders that fought bravely against him. I wanted to make sure the powers of my magically induced final form were stable, so I went to Illusioner Alan to confirm. Your magical kyther seems to be working, Alan. Oh, Zozo, what have I always said? Magic can't do everything. You took that form on your own. My great illusion was convincing you that my weapon was the reason. Wow, I didn't expect that. You truly are a skilled illusioner, Alan. But I didn't leave the base without any new gear. The gorilla made sure I had full diamond armor for the battle with Necromancer Bryce. 
You're a hero, Ice Spider Zozo. I really wish I could have met more Ice Spiders. As long as there's a world, there's a way. I'll make sure the world is safe after I stop Bryce. Go get that evil creep. Remember the path I showed you through the Gravelly Mountains. On day 99, I was traveling through the Gravelly Mountains toward the Ice Spikes on my way to the showdown with Necromancer Bryce. I was intercepted by a whole bunch of skeleton vanguards who seemed really eager to sacrifice me as always. Bryce really rolled out the welcome mat early, huh? Spider of Ice, Spider of Ice, must we say it thrice? It has to be time for your sacrifice. Even though my strength, my hearts, my gear, and my magic all surpassed theirs, the skeleton vanguards descended on me in great numbers. They're slowing me down. I won't be able to reach Bryce by the day of destruction. I had to retreat as quickly as I could. That's when I ran into the mountaineer, and he wanted to fight those nasty skeletons for me so I could take down the big boss who started it all. Go on now, I spider. We climbed the tallest peak together. Now face your greatest challenge with pride. On day 100, I used the key to the lair and entered the inner sanctum of Necromancer Bryce. The day of destruction is at hand, and here you are, allowing yourself to be sacrificed. There will be no sacrifice and no destruction. We traded a series of blasts, his necromancy blast and my ice blast. We each took a bit of damage, then I turned invisible. You crushed my people, but I'm taking back the ice spikes and the entire world from your evil. You would fight to protect a world that took away your family? The world didn't do that, Necromancer Bryce. Yeah, that was you. I reappeared and attacked his blind spot with my diamond sword. He began charging up his most powerful spell yet. It was the same spell he almost defeated me with the last time we fought. Necromancer Bryce let the spell of doom fly at me. I waited until the very last second, then I used my warp ability to move out of the way and appear right behind him. You missed me, and now it's over for you. I swung my diamond sword repeatedly with all my might, destroying the necromancer before he could destroy anything else. This world would live on, and so would I. On day one, I spawned in as a zombie warden. Whoa, I guess I must be a warden who was revived into a zombie. What are the chances? I only had six hearts to start with, probably because I had just been brought back. I'll bet I can become a lot stronger than this. It looks like I already had the physical strength of a zombie and the senses of a warden. I could also perform a wicked sonic boom. Even after becoming a zombie, I've still got it. I realized that I was inside of some musty old tomb. There was a necromancer nearby who seemed to be jumping for joy. Yes, I have done it. After so many tries, I have turned a warden into a zombie. Now my creation will serve me and do my bidding. Whoa there, guy. I just got here. Don't I get to choose whether or not I do your bidding? Hmm? Free will? I guess I need to use a stronger control spell. The necromancer started slinging magic at me. It was probably the control spell he mentioned. I didn't want to be controlled, so I started to run away. I ran off into a hallway of the tomb and found cover against the necromancer's spells. He was not happy about that. You will serve me! Get him, Reaper! An undead reaper was summoned and ran towards me, chasing me. But I found a hole in the wall and squeezed through. On the other side were a bunch of coffins and gravestones. I guess I could rest here since I'm a zombie. I'll find a way out of this place tomorrow so I can stay free. On day two, I took my first steps towards freedom and entered a forest inside of a cave. I thought that the way to the surface must have been somewhere around here. I could see perfectly in the darkness because of my warden senses, so I punched one of the trees and gathered enough wood to make a wooden axe and pickaxe. This forest was way bigger than I expected. I realized that I had no idea how to get to the surface from here, but I was determined to keep exploring this place until I did. I soon found out that I wasn't alone. There was some kind of warrior ghost floating around near a mysterious monument which was emitting a strong light. Greetings! You must be another one of that necromancer's pawns. Or at least you were. I'm nobody's pawn. The name is Zozo, and I'm looking for a way out of this tomb so I can start a new life on the outside. You're lucky you can move around so freely. I am ghostbound to this monument, but my spirit is too strong to be controlled by that necromancer. So he tried to make you his servant too? Yes, but be warned, the necromancer was not the most evil thing in this tomb. There is a more ancient and deadly force living deep below, and it too may try to keep you here. Good to know. Thank you for the heads up. 
I continued to explore the forest and ran into some cave-dwelling mooses. It was honestly a good thing because I had gotten very hungry. I'm eating mooses tonight. Or wait, is the plural moose or mooses? Or is it meese? Whatever it was, the raw moose ribs I got from the fight tasted great. It seems like most zombies have got an all-meat diet. On day three, I found a wide open cavern where I could start building an underground base. I can't be much of a warden without a place to ward. I mined some stones so that I could build a small shelter for myself. With the material situation sorted for now, I started to build myself a temporary tent-like base. I would need to get more materials before I could make a high quality base, but this would do for now. I heard a sound behind me, and my keen warden senses told me that it was a soul eater. I fired off a sonic boom to tell it not to mess with me, but it seemed to only make it matter. The soul eater ran towards me and attacked. You're not getting my soul today. I fought back with my zombie strength. The soul eater was a tough enemy, but my sonic boom had weakened it before we got into melee range, so I was able to win the fight. I felt the souls that the soul eater had collected enter me and began to feel my power grow. My number of hearts doubled to 12, and I even became slightly larger. Later, with the rest of the wood I gathered, I built a fence around my shelter. On days four to five, I searched the forest cavern for more materials to use for my base and to protect myself. I wonder if the entrance of the tomb has any materials that I might have missed. Even though it was risky, I went back in the direction of the tomb. When I arrived at the entrance, I found that the necromancer was there waiting for me. You again! I already told you that I won't be controlled. I am a free zombie! You have no idea what is coming for you, Zozo. The Demon King promised me great rewards if I could build an undead legion for his army. The Demon King? Who is that? He has waited countless eons to make his return. This tomb was where the ancient heroes of the past sealed him away. But now that he has come back, the world will belong to him. And I will do my part to ensure that. The necromancer cast another confusion spell, but I countered it with a perfectly timed sonic boom that stopped it in midair. Nice try, but I won't work for you, and I won't work for the Demon King. I blocked another confusion spell with my sonic boom and drew my sword. I ran toward the necromancer and struck him down. You foolish zombie! You could have been on the winning side, but now you will pay the price for being a traitor! He crumbled into dust, leaving nothing behind. On day six to eight, I began digging into the walls of the cavern so that I could find a way towards the outside. My brand new tunnel quickly turned into a mine and I was able to gather a ton of stone. I built myself a full set of stone armor. While I was at it, I also upgraded my tools to stone. It was just in time because a pack of kobolds showed up right after to attack my base and try to steal my materials. I fired a sonic boom which startled them and then I hacked and slashed with my stone sword until I took down the entire group. I was starting to get the hang of the zombie warden fighting style but I knew I'd be able to get even stronger. These upgrades are only the beginning. On days 9 to 10, I was in my mind when my stone pickaxe started breaking through netherrack. A few minutes later, I broke out of the wall and onto the surface. But the surface world was not how I imagined it. It was overrun with monsters. The entire landscape was filled with lava. Is this the work of the Demon King? If I was going to survive out here on my own, I was going to need some better materials. I looked around the dark landscape to see if I could find any. That's when I ran into the Demon King himself. It is so good to be free. Or should I say bad to be free? Bad for you, that is. You must be the Demon King. I'm the zombie warden of the tomb. Call me Zozo. So you're the one who defeated that necromancer and made me lose my undead army. No matter. I never needed them anyway. I will conquer the world without the undead. He swiped his sword at me faster than I could let out a sonic boom. That one blow took out a lot of my health, and I could tell right then and there that the Demon King was too strong for me to defeat. What's the matter, Zozo? Are you scared? Yeah, a little. That's why I'm getting out of here. I turned and ran back towards my underground base. For some reason, the Demon King didn't choose to follow me. Why would I return to the tomb I was sealed in? I have the whole world to destroy now. When I arrived back at the hillside, I was surprised to see a familiar enemy. It was the Reaper that the Necromancer had summoned to fight me. 
Back for more, Reaper? Not at all! I came to thank you for setting me free from that spellcaster's control! Oh! I guess we're cool then! We're more than cool! I saw the way you stood up to the Demon King! Perhaps we can work together and take him down! But I ran away! You ran away a second more than anyone else! Which means you're braver than you know! Besides, if we want to keep our freedom, we'll have to face him eventually! He'll send another necromancer to control us before long! Point taken! I guess it's you and me, Reaper! Please, call me Grimsley! On days 11 to 12, I invited Grimsley back to my base and began to build another structure to house him. While I was at it, I popped my tent back up, then decided that wasn't enough. So I turned my tent into a watchtower. That way, I could observe what was happening on the surface while I was in my base. Yes. I spent some time out in the surface world gathering materials to craft new items. The surface world had a lot of warped stems, and I made sure to get as much as I could. I then proceeded to explore the area some more. I mean, who knows what I might find here? While I was exploring, I spotted a mob. It was headed my way, so I got ready for a fight! I blasted the approaching lava monster with my sonic boom, but it didn't do much damage! My stone weapons also had no effect on the creature at all! Oh no, I'm too weak! I need to get a better weapon and come back! I disappeared into the forest and retreated away from the battlefield. Using some of my leftover stone, I crafted myself a brand new mace for combat! It was a slow weapon, but it had a lot of power, and that suited me just fine. The next time I saw that lava monster, I took him down in one hit. Hooray! Now this is a weapon I can use! I decided not to stop there. The mace was great, but I could use a durable set of armor to match. Some iron tools wouldn't hurt either. I went back to my personal mineshaft and began to dig for iron. It didn't take me too long to find enough to improve my tools and armor level. I smelted the iron down and crafted myself a full set of iron armor and tools. On days 13 to 15, the ghost of the ancient warrior called me to his side and told me the tale of the Demon King. 100 years ago, the world was under attack by a Demon King and his army of demons and monsters. The big evil guy had succeeded in uniting the demons, the undead mobs, and the two-headed ogre tribe into an unstoppable fighting force. The villagers and animals tried to stand against the Demon King, but they were no match. It seemed that all hope was lost, until one day, the legendary heroes appeared. I was one of them. Together, myself and my companions used our legendary weapons to strike deadly blows on the Demon King. Weakening him enough for our cleric to trap him inside of the tomb, we now stand inside. It seems as though the seal held for exactly 100 years before being broken. I can only imagine that this is because there were no heroes powerful enough to use that spell in the modern day. So you're saying that even you and the other legendary heroes couldn't defeat the Demon King back then? And then the only way was to seal him, even though it didn't last? It's better than letting him rampage around and do whatever he wants. I don't know. Even if there was somebody who could cast the sealing spell these days, would it even matter? It's like putting a band-aid on a broken sword. I'm sorry, but it doesn't sound like there is anything that can be done. On days 16 to 19, I couldn't find Grimsley anywhere in the base, even in the house I built for him. Grimsley wouldn't just leave without telling me. I better look for him. It was a good thing I was part warden, because wardens are really good at finding things. I wandered out farther than I ever had before, to a hill with dark grass and strange ruins on top of it. I spotted Grimsley, but he wasn't alone. There was another mob there, and it looked like it was wearing a magic robe. Oh no, another necromancer has tried to capture Grimsley. I got closer, and I saw that I was correct. The cloaked figure had him enclosed in a ritual circle, and Grimsley was trapped. Zozo, is that you? Help me! Don't worry, Grimsley, I'll save you! I fired a sonic boom, which disrupted the necromancer's chanting. He got angry and fired some evil bolts at me. I circled around the hill, using the ruins as cover. I managed to catch him by surprise and wind up an overhead smash with my mace. See you later! The magic circle collapsed when the caster was defeated and Grimsley was set free. Well done, Zozo. I thought I was going to be controlled again for sure. Don't worry, buddy. I gotcha. Neither of us will ever be controlled again. This time, the Demon King won't have the help of the undead. We'll be fighting against him. That's the spirit. Or should I say, we're the spirits. Inspired by Grimsley's words, I felt myself begin to grow and change. 
my number of hearts increased to 20, and I also gained increased melee damage. Zombierific! It was just in time, too, because we were joined by a troop of knights. Their leader wore ice armor. Freeze, undead servants of the Demon King. I, Sir Frost, will put you on ice. It's cool. We don't actually work for the Demon King, and we're going to make sure no other undead has to either. Oh, pardon the misunderstanding then. I'll be off to continue facing his forces and searching for the legendary blade of Demon Sealing. Wait, a blade like that exists? We certainly hope so. It is said to contain the magic of the cleric who sealed him the first time. Well, if you need any help, you know who to call. Me, Zozo. On days 20 to 22, I went back to the base only to find it overrun with giant centipedes. All right, you bugs, prepare to get squashed. They were quick, but not very tough. So I used my sword instead of my mace. I figured this place needed a statue. One that would show those knights that allies could be found here, in the remnants of the Demon King's tomb. It would have to be brave and mighty, not to mention cool. Sir Frost will be so impressed that he'll make me his second in command. Plus, he's probably the modern day descendant of one of those legendary heroes who beat the Demon King. That's how it usually works. I needed white and blue for the statue to really look like him, so I went to gather some dolomite and lapis. I managed to mine quite a bit of the materials I needed and went back to the base. With access to those materials, I could start working on the statue. It was really starting to come together and look like a base of something great. What do you think it'll be? While you're leaving a comment on what you think it'll be, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can see more of my amazing adventures. On days 23 to 26, the kobolds returned in even greater numbers. This time, they had some ranged weapons on them too. I guess kobolds were craftier than I thought. Fortunately, my melee damage had gotten stronger and I could easily deal with them. One of the kobolds I defeated dropped a bow and a quiver full of poison-tipped arrows. This would make a good backup ranged weapon for my sonic boom. Since there were no necromancers to cast spells on me, I took a trip down into the depths of the tomb. It looked like they had been taken over by a den of slimes and spiders, and they were in the middle of a territory struggle. Am I interrupting something? I cleared out the vermin and gathered up their webs and slime balls. Once I returned to the base, I was able to craft those materials into some leaves. After I was done with that, I spotted another kobold jumping in front of my base and ran down to face it. Oh, hey, there's still another kobold back here. Back for another fight. No way. I want to join you guys. The other kobolds were always mean to me. Oh, I didn't know. Don't worry, buddy. I gotcha. I built a new house for the kobold and set him up with a workshop to make new weapons and gizmos. Let me make it up to you by building some traps around the base for you. On days 27 to 31, I returned to the forest and talked to the ancient warrior about the legendary blade that Sir Frost mentioned. Apparently, this blade can seal the Demon King away again. Does that sound like something that the other legendary warriors might have done? It is possible that the cleric planned ahead and sealed one more spell into the legendary weapon. But I've been trapped here the whole time as a guardian ghost, so I have no idea what happened in those hundred years. I suppose I'll have to go looking and see what the world is like out there. The Demon King is most likely sending his minions to destroy whatever is left of the legendary hero's descendants. If you can find them first, one of them probably knows how to find the legendary blade. Well then, there's no time to waste. Thanks, Ancient Warrior. I'm out of here. I journeyed out into the wilderness in search of the legacy that the legendary heroes left behind. I came upon a bridge over a deep ravine, which was guarded by a two-headed giant. Just try to get past us. You won't. Watch me. I shot a poison-tipped arrow into the giant and watched as their health started to get chipped away. Why, you? The giant charged right into the path of my swinging mace. Kapow! The hit knocked them back, causing them to stumble over the side of the ravine. The two-headed giant fell all the way to the bottom, but didn't disappear. I quickly ran across the bridge before they found a way back up. On days 32 to 35, I found a grove full of trees, and in it were a bunch of songbirds. Hello, traveler. What brings you to this peaceful place? My name is Zozo, and I'm here in search of a legendary blade that can seal the Demon King. Oh, the Blade of the Cleric. This place was created by one of the other legendary heroes, so we've heard of it, but we're not sure where it is. Darn it, this is still a very nice clearing. But wait, if it was made by the heroes, then... Just as I realized, the Demon King came rushing into the grove. 
He used his magic staff and destroyed half of the grove in one hit. Luckily, I'm here. Run away, birds. I'll distract him. The songbirds ran away just in time, as the Demon King was right next to me. We meet again, Zozo. This time I'll destroy you. It seemed like he meant it. He was immune to the poison of my arrows, and he closed in on me before I could use my sonic boom. Thinking quickly, I surprised him with my increased melee damage. Impressive, but it will take more than that to defeat me. I guess we'll find out next time. I ran off while the Demon King just stood there, laughing. But at least I lived to fight another day. Just as I got far enough away, I spotted one of the songbirds. I'm sorry about your home. We'll be able to find a new home. You saved us, and that's what matters. My base can be your new home. Oh, sweet. On days 36 to 39, I constructed an aviary where the birds could live as peacefully as they did back at the grove. Can you tell me anything else you know about the legendary heroes? There were four of them in total. The warrior, the cleric, the singer, and the ice knight. The singer was the one who made our grove, and I hear that the ice knight founded an order of brave warriors who dwell in the snowy north. That sounds like Sir Frost and his companions. I should go visit them. The good thing about the North is that it's very well protected. The Demon King will have to spend a lot of resources to claim it. If there's another place where his forces can be resisted, it would be there. Awesome! I should get prepared and make this alliance official. The undead can team up with the knights, and together we'll find the legendary blade. Then we'll show the Demon King who's really boss. But before I left to go explore the snowy North, I did a bit more on my statue. I felt inspired because I was reminded of Sir Frost. On days 40 to 43, another undead showed up at the base and I welcomed them into the ranks of the resistance. Hi, my name is Gabby Ghoul. Welcome to the team, Gabby. Thanks, I'm from the lower east side of the tomb and I know there are some really good materials behind a secret door. That sounds cool. Will you show us where the secret door is? Sure, since you asked so nicely. Gabby showed us the secret door in the Lower East Tomb, and sure enough, there was gold ore which could be used to craft some very valuable gold items. It was almost too good to be true, but it was true, and there was a warder there to make it a little less good. I did a sonic boom on the dangerous mob and performed a combo with my mace. It took a few more hits than most of the enemies I'd faced, but it went down just like the rest of them. Wow, there's a lot of useful stuff back here. I have some materials to give to the Kobold Trapsmith. I returned to the kobold and gave him all of the materials I collected. I'm sure he will make great use of them. On days 44 to 49, I traveled across the land until I reached the snowy north. If I were human, I'd probably have to wear a coat. Thank goodness I'm undead. The local mobs were completely different from the ones that I had encountered in the lands that the Demon King had ransacked. But just because they weren't working for the Demon King didn't mean they were friendly. A winged imp monster known as a Vex swooped from out of the sky and tried to take me down. That hurt. I guess it's time to get serious. I swung my mace at the creature, but it was too slow. It flew back up into the sky out of melee range. But that was a mistake on the mob's part because I used my sonic boom to drop it. I decided to travel deeper in, had noticed more of these things, and also that they were attacking a poor arctic fox. I drew my bow and arrow. I had the element of surprise, so I launched arrows into all of them. The vexes were poisoned and defeated. That's when a fox approached me, looking very relieved. Oh, that was helpful. Thank you. That's what I do. I help people. Are you part of the Ice Knight Order? I've been looking for them. So have I. I need their help with finding a legendary blade. The one that can seal the Demon King back? So it does exist. At least my village wasn't attacked for nothing. The Demon King's forces are there right now, looking for it. I need the knights to come and save us. I guess we've got the same goal. Let's see what we can do together. On days 50 to 53, the fox and I traveled further into the snowing north, trying to avoid the prying eyes of the vexes. Maybe if we look around, we'll find someone who can give you a bit more information about the blade of the cleric. There are a lot of people who hate the Demon King, so they'll probably be willing to help out. But the one person I didn't want to see was the multi-headed giant. He'd finally tracked me down, and he wanted some payback. Is this a friend of yours, Zozo? Yeah, something like that. I rushed in and unleashed my sonic boom, but he dodged the sonic boom and charged at me. 
I guess two heads are finally looking better than one. But I was stronger than I was all those days ago, and I didn't need only my sonic boom to fight my enemies. As the giant got closer, I pulled out my mace and jumped into the air. One strike of my mace to the giant's multiple heads, and he was defeated. That was amazing. You're a real hero, Zozo. I'm just a zombie warden doing his best. As Fox and I continued to explore, we found a mutant snow golem camping. Hey, Mr. Snow Golem, I'm Zozo, and I'm looking for the Sword of the Cleric. Do you know where I can find it? Sorry to burst your bubble, kid, but it doesn't work that way. You don't just find the Sword of the Cleric. Legends say that when you reveal yourself to be worthy, only then will the sword find its way to you. Oh, so I'm not a real hero yet? Uh, you don't have the sword, so probably not. But you seem like a good kid. Take this protection enchantment. It'll help you on your quest. Thanks, Mr. Snow Golem. I appreciate it. On days 54 to 57, I made the long and hard journey back across the map, then went underground to my base. I decided to apply the protection enchantment to my chest plate so I'd be able to withstand more powerful attacks easier. Afterwards, I noticed that the kobold installed some traps, a lava chest trap, a diamond door trap, and a pit trap. Hopefully these will never have to come in handy, but good to have them, just in case. Just then, Grimsley approached me with an important task. Zozo, thank goodness you're here. Gabby Ghoul has gotten sick. I fear that it's some kind of hex caused by the Demon King. I can make a healing potion to help her, but I need you to collect some apples from the warped forest. It's a vital ingredient. Don't worry, Grimsley. I'll be right on it. You stay here and tend to Gabby. I quickly went to the overworld and began exploring the warped forest until I happened upon some apples. I collected as many as I could, wanting to make sure there was enough for Gabby's healing potions. I went back to the underground base and gave Grimsley the apples. This is perfect, Zozo. I have even more than I need. Here, take a few of these spare health potions. You never know when they might come in handy. On days 58 to 62, I decided to take a load off and work on the statue after a pretty stressful week. Everyone needs a little relaxation time. Can you guess what it is yet? But just as I was about to continue my statue build, I noticed that a gang of demonic reavers working for the Demon King suddenly started attacking my base. Leave it to a guy called the Demon King to never fight fair. But I had an ace in the hole. As the reavers tried to ransack my base, they activated the different traps. A few fell into the lava pit, some more fell from my pit trap, and one of them even fell from my diamond ore trap. And even more were taken out by my sonic booms. I'll take on as many reavers as the Demon King can send at me. But I wasn't prepared for a sneak attack from behind from Grimsley, the Reaper, which knocked me down. Grimsley, how could you? I thought we were friends. I'm so sorry, Zozo. We are friends. But the Demon King somehow reactivated the Necromancer's control spell. I'm not in control of my own body. He is. Grimsley, you have to fight it. I promise I'll help free you. I'm worried you're already too late, Zozo. Just promise me you'll stay safe and don't follow me. And with that, the mind-controlled Grimsley ran off. On day 63 to day 66, I took one of the healing potions that Grimsley made for me and chased him out of the base. Looks like he's headed for the warped forest. I need to chase him and snap him out of this funk. I followed him until I caught up with him in the darkness of the forest. It was just me and Grimsley facing off. Zozo, I told you not to follow me. It was a trap from the Demon King all along. That's when even more reavers came out of the forest to battle me. It looked like more than I could even take on. Oh. Grimsley, I need you to help me. I can't help you, Zozo. I'm not in control. You have to fight, Grimsley. You're not just a servant of the Necromancer or the Demon King. You're your own person. I could see that Grimsley was struggling to regain control, and eventually, Grimsley snapped out of it. You're right, Zozo. I am my own person. Now let's show these reavers that we mean business. Grimsley and I fought off the reavers together. Between the two of us, those servants of evil stood no chance. Thank you for never giving up on me, Zozo. I'll never give up on a friend. And as it turns out, when the Demon King invaded my mind, I also invaded his. I got a vision of a cave deep in the basalt deltas. We might be able to find something useful there. On day 67 to 70, Grimsley and I decided we'd make our way to the Basalt Deltas cave together and take the fight to the Demon King. Do you think the Blade of the Cleric is in there, Grimsley? Only if you're worthy. And look, that might be a good way to prove yourself. 
Grimsley was gesturing to a huge, scary Wendigo that was patrolling the outside of the cave. He must have been another demonic servant of the Demon King. I'll go in first. Follow my lead! I ran towards the Wendigo and unleashed a sonic boom! It was more formidable than anything I'd ever faced before. Thankfully, I still had my mace. I pulled it out and hit the Wendigo several times as it roared and shrieked, but the attacks only made it angrier. Then, the Wendigo started fighting back. Every time it hit or bit me, it was knocking off heart after heart. It was terrifying. There was nothing I could do to stop it. I saw my life flashing before my eyes when suddenly Grimsley stormed in to save me. Leave my friend alone, Wendigo, or you're gonna learn exactly why you should fear the Reaper. Grimsley attacked. I don't know if he hurt the Wendigo, but he spooked it enough to finally run it off. You really saved me there, Grimsley. Thank you. Just repaying my debt, Zozo. Now let's take a look inside the cave. On day 71 to day 74, we entered the cave, hoping to find the Blade of the Cleric waiting for me. But no, the cave was empty, and I was devastated. I guess I'm still not worthy. It's okay, Zozo. I'm sure we'll be able to find it. We just need to believe in ourselves. We better start believing harder, because if we don't, then the Demon King is gonna rise to full power, and without the Blade of the Cleric, there'll be nothing we can do to stop him. On day 75 to day 78, I returned to my base and decided it was time to upgrade my mace since it was about to break. So I did just that and crafted a new mace. Then I decided to supercharge it and applied the sharpness enchantment on it to improve its hitting power. Nobody will want to mess with me now. But that was wrong because the Wendigo who'd gotten away in the Badlands suddenly appeared and he was here for me. Unlike the Reavers, he wasn't tricked by any of the traps. He had my scent and he was coming straight for me with his teeth and claws ready. But this time though, I had my upgraded mace and I was ready to fight back. The Wendigo squared up and I hit him back. And after that hit, he didn't get back up. Because the Wendigo was so powerful, defeating him gave me a lot of XP, causing me to get bigger, stronger, and finally reach 30 hearts. I was one of the most powerful zombie wardens in the world. I was even starting to look more like an actual warden and became pretty buff. This is my coolest upgrade yet. That's when I had a vision. I needed to return to the snowy north. Something would be waiting for me there. Something I needed if I wanted to defeat the Demon King. So of course, there was no time to waste. On day 79 to day 84, I traveled into the snowy north until I found a fortress that looked like something out of my vision. And as it turned out, it was this fortress that was manned by Sir Frost and his knights, just who I wanted to see. I went to Sir Frost's planning room, where we began to discuss the thing on both of our minds, the Demon King. I've spent my entire life preparing to confront the Demon King if he ever rose again. And in all that time, all that responsibility, I feel I've learned so little. All I know is that he'll likely reach his greatest power soon. Then we should probably stick together. He'll want to get rid of all of us as part of his rise to power, but that'll be harder if we're working with each other. Come back to my base. We'll be safe there, Sir Frost. Hmm, you make a good point, Zozo. I'll prepare my things. We'll head off shortly. On day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base to check on Gabby Ghoul, who had started living inside of my statue, and ask her how she was recovering from the hex that the Demon King had put on her. I'm feeling a lot better now, Jojo. Thank you. And there's something I should tell you. I've been having visions lately. The Demon King, I know he's hiding somewhere with blue trees. Does that mean anything to you? Blue trees? That has to be the warped forest! That's the only place that looks like that! Thank you, Gabby! I know where to find him now! On day 90 to day 94, I went into the mines and managed to get extremely lucky and mine my first set of diamonds! If I'm gonna face the Demon King, I need some extremely tough armor! I forged myself a full set of diamond armor, which would defend me against almost anything. And then I went about enchanting every piece of my armor just so that I would be as prepared as possible. Diamonds are a zombie warden's best friend. On day 95 to day 97, I finished the statue. It was the statue made in tribute to one of the coolest warriors I know, Sir Frost. He'd spent his whole life searching for ways to stop the Demon King and looking at his statue, I knew I'd be honored to spend my unlife doing the same. The Demon King would fall and it would be because of me. 
On day 98, all the preparations had been made. The last thing I was able to do was talk to my friends I'd made who were staying at my base. First, I spoke to Grimsley. I believe you can do this, Zozo. With or without the blade of the cleric, you're a true hero, and you will defeat this monstrous villain. Next, I spoke to Gabby Ghoul. You're brave and kind, Jojo, and that will serve you well against the Demon King. Never forget that. And of course, Sir Frost, the Ice Knight. Are you sure you want to do this alone, Zozo? I would happily fight by your side, if you so will it. Thank you, Sir Frost, but you've been fighting this fight a long time. Let me finish it for you. And if you want to help me, the best thing you can do is subscribe to Zozo and ring the bell to always be notified of the next adventure. On day 99, with everything said, I left the underground base and made my way deep into the horrors of the nether. The first stop was the Crimson Forest, the only way to the warped forest Gabby had mentioned, where the Demon King would be waiting. That's when I saw something crawling out of the ground. It was another warden, just like me, except he wasn't zombified. You worthless traitor! The necromancer and the Demon King gave you everything, and yet you rebel! You make me sick, you undead freak! I'd rather be undead and free than alive and taking orders from the Demon King! The enemy warden tried to unleash a sonic boom on me, but I wasn't about to waste time on him when I had the biggest fish to fry! I unleashed my sonic boom, and the enemy warden was completely destroyed! Traitor! And with him out of the way, it was time to enter the warped forest and finally finish this thing! On day 100, I entered the warped forest and prepared myself for the fight of my own life. It wouldn't be easy. First, I had to deal with the Endermen. They kept teleporting around me, and it took both my mace and my mega sonic boom to take care of them. It doesn't matter how much you delay, I'm gonna take on your boss soon enough. I thought I'd need to keep searching for the Demon King, but instead, the Demon King came for me. He floated down towards me, ready to fight. You again? That little failed experiment that killed the necromancer. Are you truly foolish enough to think you can best me, the Demon King? And with that, he began to grow, becoming a far bigger and more powerful version of himself than I had ever seen. He had finally reached his full power. Even if I can't beat you, I'm still going to fight you, because what kind of person would I be if I didn't? A living one. The Demon King pulled out a powerful bow and started shooting me with it. I tried to dodge, but was quickly overwhelmed due to the sheer power of it. Weak! How disappointing! Destroying you will be an act of mercy! Just as I thought I'd be doomed, I noticed something had been added to my inventory. It was the Blade of the Cleric! My act of bravery had finally earned it! As soon as I equipped the blade, I saw myself growing, getting more powerful. I was bigger, stronger, and even had a mighty 50 heart. There would be no stopping me now! Okay, Demon King, are you ready for a real fight? With the blade of the cleric, I attacked the Demon King, striking him again and again, forcing him further back into the warped forest, weakening him, breaking him down. I could tell he was afraid. Zozo, wait! Clearly you're strong! How about we join forces? Imagine the power we could have together! Nice offer, but I think I'll stick with my friends, Demon King! With one last blast of my sonic boom, the Demon King was destroyed, and the world was saved! After that, I went back to the base happy to finally relax. On day one, I spawned in as a medieval knight. And look at that, I already have iron gear and 10 hearts. It was a good thing I had the gear because I was immediately attacked by a group of hoglins. Where did you guys come from? Since I had an iron sword, I was able to defeat the first few with no problems. The last, however, started to run away. Hey, get back here. The hoglin ran into the woods and I ran after him. But soon, I couldn't see which way he went. Which way did he go? I ran in the direction he had been going before and soon stumbled on a large fort in the distance. I could see the hoglin looking down at me from the second floor. I started running toward the the entrance of the fort when suddenly the ground opened up and I fell into a dark hole. Ah, ah, ah. Why am I still falling? Just as I was starting to think I might be falling forever, I suddenly landed in a pool of water. 
<coughs> Where am I? I swam out of the pool and saw I was in a dimly lit, dark underground area. And what was this? Now I only have five hearts? I was so confused. Maybe this was all just a bad dream. I saw a good spot to rest and set up a small camp. Maybe if I could fall asleep, I could wake up from this nightmare. On day two, I woke up, still in the same place. I decided it was best that I look around and try to find out what was going on. Level 100. Huh. Guess I better see what's behind this door. I climbed up the stairs and saw another door, which was also labeled. Level 99. Okay, interesting. I'm guessing level 1 is how I get out of here. This is gonna be quite the journey. I better start looking for the door up. As I walked further into the room, I realized that this didn't look like a room at all. The area was a dark jungle, and there was even a sky. This must be some kind of powerful magic. I better start collecting some supplies. Who knows what could be hiding out here? I started by knocking some cocoa beans off a tree, then started punching the trees to collect some wood. After I had gathered a decent amount, I started walking through the trees to look for a door. I soon found a nice pond to stop at to rest. As I rested, I was suddenly attacked by a pack of mungai. What did I do to you? These little guys were vicious. If you saw them from afar, you would probably think they were pretty cute, but it turns out they were all just a bunch of little imposters. Shouldn't you little minions be helping a supervillain somewhere? They put up a tough challenge, but my iron sword was too much for them, and ultimately, they were all defeated. Sheesh, I gotta hurry and find that door. I kept wandering through the forest and eventually saw something glowing off in the distance. Is that it? Is this the door to the next level? I opened it up and headed up the stairs. On day three, I emerged onto level 98. Okay, it looks like that was the door to the next level. I'm glad I didn't run into any more mobs, but I'll have to keep an eye out. Turned out I needed to keep an ear out too, because just then, I heard someone calling for help. Help me, can someone help? Who could that be? I rushed toward the sound of the voice and stumbled upon a man being attacked by a group of mungai. Uh-oh, not more of these fun guys. I hopped in with my iron sword and started slashing away. I could tell they had nearly killed this poor guy. What do you think you're doing? You belong in soup. I swung away until there was only one left, and as I killed the last one, my iron sword broke. Well, I'm glad they're gone, but so is my only weapon. Anyway, how are you doing, buddy? The man rose to his feet. He was clearly hurt, but was hanging on. That was a close one. Thank you for rescuing me. I was a dead man for sure. No problem. Say, do you know what's going on here? Well, one moment I was walking through the forest looking to sell my wares, I'm a traveling merchant, you see, and the next I was falling down what seemed to be an eternal pit. I landed at the bottom and have been trying to make my way out ever since. Sounds like we're in the same boat. If we stick together, we can get out of here faster. C'est magnifique! Let's do it! Oh, zut! The merchant tried to take a couple of steps, but his leg was clearly hurt. It's my leg, but do not fret, mon ami. We will persevere. By the way, my name is Benoit. What is yours? The name's Zozo. Zozo what? Just Zozo. Sorry, I phrased that weird. Let's go! On days four to five, we had made our way up a few floors to level 95. On the previous floor, I had crafted some wooden tools to fend off some weaker mobs, but nothing too major had happened. Benoit's leg was keeping us from moving too fast, but everything was going well so far. Hey, it looks like there's some stone deposits up ahead. Let's try and get some stones for new tools. Benoit took a seat while I got out my wooden pickaxe and started mining out some stone. After I had mined out a decent amount, I put down my crafting table and fashioned together a full set of stone tools. I also made an extra sword so Benoit could defend himself. Here you go, Benoit, just in case anything happens. Using my new stone pickaxe, I decided to keep mining into the stone deposit. Maybe I could find some iron. As I continued to dig through, I couldn't believe what I found. Is this the next door? Why was it buried? under the stone. These doors aren't going to be as easy to find as I thought. I opened the door and sure enough, there was a staircase leading up to the next level. Come on, Benoit. Let's see what's waiting for us ahead. On days 6 through 8, we reached level 93, and I noticed things were a little different than the other floors. A few monkeys scampered by, and I could see an arena up ahead. Something doesn't feel right. Benoit, I think you should hang back while I go check things out. I approached the building slowly, but I didn't see anything, so I stepped inside. Just then, I heard a thump as a big bun fungus slowly emerged from the shadows and into the light. Easy there, big guy. Carrot, give me carrot. I don't have a carrot, but maybe we can find you something else. Do you have carrot or you carrot? Me carrot? I'm not a carrot. No, you carrot. I eat carrot. Me no carrot. You carrot. No carrot. Carrot. The bun fungus lunged at me and attacked. Our conversation wasn't really going anywhere, so it was probably best just to get into it. I'm not a carrot. Knock it off. For as silly as he was, the bun fungus was really strong. Clearly, he was always eating his carrots, which was contributing to his powerful blows. How about you take a bite of this? I swung my sword again and again as he chased me around the arena. He was getting some hits in, but I was holding my own. After a hard-fought battle, I was able to land the final blow, and the bun fungus was defeated. As he disappeared, I noticed he had also dropped a compass and a small crystal. I took a look at the compass first. Door locator? Is this what I think it is? I took a closer look at the compass and could see the compass was pointing me in a direction. I'll have to see if that leads me to a door. But before that, I took a look at the crystal. I'm not sure what this is supposed to do exactly. What happens when I place it? I set the crystal down, and suddenly, an image of a princess began broadcasting out of it. Hello there. I've been captured by the wizard who controls this fort, and am in need of someone like you to rescue me. Help me, brave adventure. You're my only hope. 
Oh no, she must be in real trouble. I gotta get to the top. I headed back outside and met up with Benoit. I explained the situation and he agreed to help as much as he could. We took out the compass and headed in the direction it pointed us. We soon saw the door and headed inside. But this time, there was something different. An elevator. I wonder what that's about. There was a staircase leading up to the next level, but next to the elevator was a power switch, so I flipped it on. Let's see where this goes. Benoit and I entered the elevator and hit the button inside. The elevator started to move. On days 9 through 11, we stepped out of the elevator into a large cave. Wait a second, this is the cave where I started. I took a look around to be sure, but there was no mistake. This was the same cave. If this brings us back to this floor, that makes me think there will be more elevators on future floors. Maybe we can set up a base here. That makes sense to me. How are you feeling? Definitely better, but I don't know if I can keep going up these stairs. How about I get things started down here, and you go look for the princess? That's a great plan. Before I go though, I think we should set up some kind of distraction to scare away any mobs that might try to come after you. I was thinking I could build a large statue. Great idea. I got straight to it working on the statue. I thought it should be something scary, but also something that could believably be in this world. After a bit, I had finished the first part. This is coming along great. Can you guess what it's going to be? With the first part complete, I headed back over to the elevator and stepped inside. There was just a button inside. I wonder how high it will take me. On days 12 to 14, I emerged from the elevator to see that I had returned to the same level as before. I must have to activate the elevator on a given floor to travel to it. Looks like there's no shortcuts. I then entered the door to the stairs nearby and headed up to the next floor. When I walked out, I saw that the biome was completely new. I was now in a swamp biome. This is a swamp, but the water looks off. In fact, it looks poisoned. To test this out, I headed to the edge of the water and tossed some wood I had into it. With the sizzle, the wood disintegrated completely. Oh, I'm gonna have to watch my step. Otherwise, that could be me. Unlucky for me, though, I could see my only way forward was going to be jumping on lily pads across the swamp. I sure hope those parkour lessons were worth it. I jumped ahead, landing on the lily pad. I had some close calls, too. As some of the lily pads were actually drop leaves. That could have easily dropped me into the poison. Phew, I'm glad I made it across. Well, let's find that door. I started heading in the direction of the next door. I really hope I'm not too late to save the princess. As I was walking, I was suddenly attacked by a giant mosquito. Ah, no hugs, no hugs. The mosquito was vicious. I tried to keep it away, but it kept wrapping itself around me, trying to bite me. It did some serious damage. Get off of me, you bloodthirsty psychopath. I managed to knock it back and hit the mosquito with my sword, finally defeating it. Look, I don't want to run into another one of those ever again. I kept following the compass and headed off to find the next door. On day 15, I had made my way to floor 85 when I saw a house in the distance. Another house. I wonder if there's another monster hiding inside. I gotta be careful. I took my sword out and started sneaking up to the door when the door swung open. Charge! Wait, wait! I stopped running and realized it was just an old woman. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not used to meeting people who don't attack me. <laughs> that is quite all right. I'm not used to meeting new faces either. I've heard of many people coming to this place, but so far none of them have made it this far. You must be the most skilled of them all. Thank you, but you mentioned others? What do you know of this place? The woman took a deep breath before beginning her story. Hundreds of years ago, a young wizard lived alone in the mountains. In his isolation, he became a powerful wielder of magic. For a time, he would show others his magic, but was laughed at and bullied for being weird. That one day, a young knight asked asked him for his help uniting the Broken Kingdom. The pair forged a powerful friendship, and peace was restored to the land. However, the young knight, now king, wanted the wizard to do more. He didn't just want peace in his kingdom, but he wanted to control the entire world. When the wizard refused, the king banished him. Now he lives here, capturing and toying with wayward knights and explorers as revenge for what his friend did to him. That's awful. It almost makes me feel bad for him. Don't. He didn't have to do this. He made his choice. He's nothing like the wizard he once was and has been corrupted in his anger. I see. Well, that helps. I better get going. The wizard has to be stopped. You should come with me. Thank you for the offer, but I'm actually quite happy with the new life I've built. It suits me here, but I have something that should help you. The old woman tossed out a potion of endurance. I picked it up and took a drink. Immediately I felt my strength returning and I regained all 10 of my hearts. Oh wow, I feel amazing. Thank you for this. You're very welcome, young man. Take this as well. You might find yourself needing it out there. She threw out a poison resistance potion, which I picked up. Thanks again for all of your help. I'm sure we'll see each other again. On days 16 to 19, I was traversing the swamp when I came across a cave. These stone tools aren't going to cut it for much longer. I should see if I can find some iron in that cave. I headed into the cave and soon saw several iron ores. I got to mining and managed to mine a few of them. All right, let's go see if I can get a few more. I started making my way down the cave when I heard a horrible roar. 
I turned around and saw a huge crocodile looking right at me. Uh-oh, this doesn't look good. The crocodile charged at me and attacked. His powerful jaws did a lot of damage. My stone sword felt like it was barely doing anything. My iron armor was pretty weak, and he even managed to break some of it. With armor missing, my health was really starting to drop, so I had no choice but to run away. Okay, okay, you win this one. I ran back out of the cave, and luckily the crocodile didn't follow me out. Man, there was so much more iron in there. How much did I get? I took a look and saw I had gotten enough for maybe a couple of tools, but that was it. Well, I don't have enough to fix my armor and make new tools. I'll only be able to do one or the other. I decided that I would build a sword and do my best not to get hit. I quickly made a forge, smelted down the iron I had, and crafted an iron sword. This is gonna be a risky move, but who knows how likely I am to find more iron. I equipped my sword and snuck back into the cave. As I made my way, I could see the crocodile just up ahead. He hadn't noticed me. With the amount of armor I had left, I could probably only take a couple of hits. Here goes nothing. I sprang into action and started furiously swinging my sword. I jumped forward and back, doing my best to dodge the croc's bites. Despite my best efforts, he managed to get a hit in. Uh-oh, this is gonna be a close one. The crocodile snapped at me furiously, but at long last, I was able to land the fatal blow. Oh man, let's not do that again. With the crocodile out of the way, I mined out the rest of the iron I needed. With the freshly mined iron, I smelted it down and made myself a new set of iron armor, which I gratefully equipped. I'm feeling safer already. On to the next room. From days 20 to 22, I eventually found myself on floor 78, which looked extremely similar to the floor the bun fungus was on, or at least the building in front of me did. Okay, this building looks just like that other one. There's gotta be a scary monster hiding in this one. There was just one problem. The building was completely surrounded by poison water. How am I gonna get across this? I threw down a crafting table and quickly made a boat. I set the boat in the water, but it immediately started smoking and disappeared into the poison. That was when I remembered the poison resistance potion the old woman had given me. I drank it down and jumped into the water. Hmm, I probably should have just tipped a toe in before jumping all the way in, but it seems to be working. As I crossed, I saw some clay at the bottom of the swamp, so I stopped and mined some of it out. I can use this for the statue. With the clay collected, I continued to cross the swamp and soon reached the other side. I made my way up to the opening of the arena and took a peek inside, but didn't see anything. The arena was filled with poison, but my potion had run out. I hopped across the drop leaves, just barely making it to the other side. Phew, that was a close one. I don't see anything though. <laughs> What was that? Suddenly, a strange plant creature rose out of the swamp and started moving toward me. It was a whisperer. All right, no need to panic. He let out a shriek and started to attack. This whisperer was insane. He would wave his arms, which caused plants to fly up from the ground. He also summoned a large flower that would attack me. Oh, I gotta get out of the way of these plants. I jumped around the arena using the lily pads to try and get hits in, but his special attacks were making this difficult. The closer I can get, the better chance I'll have. It was risky having to jump across the poison pond, but if I couldn't get close enough to get hits in, there was no way I was going to win. You're not so tough at close range, are you? Finally was able to start wearing him down and let out a flurry of hits. Soon enough, he was down. As he disappeared, I noticed a chest on the other side of the room. What could be in here? I popped the chest open and saw it was full of gold ingots. I'm not sure what I'll do with these, but I'll hang on to them, just in case. With my new loot, I looked ahead and saw the door leading to the next level. Inside of it was another elevator. I flipped the nearby switch to activate it. I'll bet this takes me back to the first level. I should go see what Benoit is up to. I entered the elevator and headed down. On days 23 to 26, I re-entered the cave and saw that Benoit had been making some small improvements to the base. He had set up a small crafting and smelting area, but had another request for me. Zozo, mon ami, could you give me a hand on this next project? I need a place to sell my wares. I agreed, and we got to work building Benoit a shop. It seemed a little silly since as far as I knew, I was the only customer he could have. But he was a nice guy and I wanted to help. C'est bon, this shop is amazing. Merci, Zozo. No problem. So have you got something to sell? As a matter of fact, I do. If you have some money for me, I'd be happy to sell to you. I don't have any money, but I do have some gold bars. Give me one second. I headed over to the crafting area and tossed out some of the gold bars. Using my pick, I managed to shape them into some gold coins. These should work great. I headed over to Benoit and asked him what he had in stock. For now, the only item I have in stock is a bow and some arrows. I'm hoping to find some more inventory around the caves. A bow could be really helpful, actually. I'll take it. I tossed Benoit some of my coins and took the bow and arrows off the shelf in return. With my new item, I was going to be even more deadly than before. On days 27 to 31, I decided I would do some work on the statue before heading back up the tower. Benoit seemed to be pretty safe so far, but the sooner we could finish the statue, the safer I felt he could be. Soon, I had finished the second part. Go ahead and put your guesses for what it will be in the comments. And while you're down there, feel free to hit subscribe and ring the bell. I love having you on these adventures with me. Next, I headed over to the elevator to take it back up the tower. On the next level, I saw I was now in a Badlands biome. Okay, I'm starting to see the pattern here. Looks like every so often there's a mini boss, and then the next floors take place in a new biome. Interesting. 
I didn't have too long to think about it though, as I was suddenly attacked by a couple of tarantula hawks. Stay back, you buzzards! These guys weren't too big, but they were intense. I was actually really surprised by how strong they were, given their size. They were trying to keep their distance, but I was able to use my new bow to get hits on them. It didn't take too much longer, and I was able to take them all out of the sky. These mobs are getting tougher with each floor. I can't even imagine what's waiting for me on floor one. That's when I noticed that the durability on my bow had greatly depleted. Hey, what's this? My bow isn't very durable. I'm gonna have to have a chat with Benoit about this later. On days 32 to 35, I had reached floor 64 when I noticed there was some terracotta nearby. Ooh, I'm gonna need that for the statue. I better go pick it up. I mined out a good portion of terracotta, then continued on my way. This Badlands area was huge. It's going to be tough to find the door. As I continued to explore, I nearly ran into a rattlesnake. Oh, watch out! I whipped out my sword and gave it a few strong swings, quickly taking it out. That was a close one. Not too shabby. I looked to the side and saw a small roadrunner was watching me. I saw you fighting tarantula hawks earlier, as well as that snake. The tarantula hawks kidnapped my daughter. Would you be able to help me rescue her? I'd be happy to help. Show me the way. The roadrunner pointed to where I needed to go and I set off. As I reached the area the roadrunner had mentioned, I realized I had made a mistake. Oh brother, this is obviously some kind of joke. The daughter was clearly a stuffed dummy and there was a cage suspended right above it, plainly meant to trap me inside. What is this? Some kind of kid's cartoon where a roadrunner tries to outsmart those around him? Like I'd fall for that. I took another step forward to get a better look when suddenly the sand beneath my feet gave way and I fell into a massive hole. I can't believe I fell for that. On days 36 to 39, I was still falling. This feels like the hole I fell into on day one. Seconds later, I crashed into a pool of water. I looked around and... Yep, I was back in the starting cave. You've got to be kidding me. This place is full of jerks. Which reminds me, I need to talk to Benoit about that bow he sold me. I made my way back over to the base and saw Benoit standing in a shop. Hey, that bow you sold me nearly broke after one fight. I paid good money for this. Oh, dear Zozo, I am so sorry. I would never intentionally sell you a poor quality product. Please, let me give you a discount on the next item. Mm, okay, fair enough. What have you got? Benoit tossed out an enchanted fire aspect iron sword. I think you'll find this sword is the quality you're looking for. For. I closely looked over the sword and everything seemed to be in order. Even with the discount, it still cost me the rest of my gold. From there, I headed back into the elevator and eventually reached the floor I'd been on before. I could see the roadrunner not too far away. Hey you! What's the big idea? Throwing me down that pit! Upon hearing my voice, he jumped in the air and started running away. Hey, get back over here. I've got something to say to you. The roadrunner was fast. I did my best to keep up with him, but it looked like he was getting away. Lucky for me though, he ran into a dead end. Now you listen here. I'm getting really tired of these games. I walked over to him and hit him once with my new sword. Ouch! Okay, okay, don't hurt me. I'm just so bored and thought it would be a funny prank. You didn't actually get hurt, right? No, but I didn't think it was very funny. I'm in a bit of a rush, so it's frustrating to have to go up all those stairs over and over again. I'll let you live, but don't mess with me. I left the roadrunner and headed in the direction of the next door. On days 40 to 43, I was exploring the new floor when I noticed something was following me. I turned around and caught a glimpse of who it was. That roadrunner again, he better not be up to something. But just then, a huge guster came out of nowhere and attacked me. This big guy was tough. I tried hitting him with my sword, but he seemed to be immune from the fire damage. He managed to hit me a few more times, and my health was getting seriously low. He even managed to suck me into his vortex and throw me into the air. It looks like this might be the end for me. But before the guster could deliver the final blow, the roadrunner jumped out and finished it off. Wow, thank you. But why are you helping me? I felt bad for pranking you. Clearly, you're just trying to do the right thing. My name is Rody. Here, let me show you something I think you will like. I followed the roadrunner for a bit and soon Sally had led me to an oasis. There was a small hut nearby too. It looked like it used to be a smithy. You're right, this place is just what I needed. Thanks for showing it to me. Feel free to stick around. The roadrunner agreed and I went and looked in the chest. Inside, I found some iron ingots as well as a shield. Using the iron ingots, I managed to repair my armor as well. Take a look at that tree too. I headed outside and saw that the nearby tree was no ordinary tree. There were some golden apples growing on it. I walked around the tree and knocked some of them off. These are going to be a huge help in the fight ahead. On days 44 to 49, we continued crossing the desert until we saw a large desert arena in the distance. I could see a corridor ahead leading into the stadium with two guards standing by. Hey, Rody, why don't you hang back while I check this out? It could be a trap, a real trap. I tried talking to the guards, but neither of them said anything. As I started to walk into the corridor, a bunch of arrows started firing. And this is the only way in? Great. I stepped into the arrows, trying to use my shield to block them. I managed to block some of the arrows, but I still took a ton of damage. With one heart left, I finally got through. Yeah, that could have gone better. I finally stepped into the arena. After I had stepped inside, the doors closed behind me. That's not good. Just then, a man dressed like a wither skeleton was standing on a platform at the top of the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, our challenger has arrived. A big round of applause, please. Hey, buddy. You know it's just us here, right? 
Thank you for that warm welcome. And now, let the games begin! This guy was clearly nuts. He must have been in the desert for too long. Just then, another door opened and a husk came running out. A single husk? What a joke. This is going to be so easy. Just then, a huge horde came running out after him. I guess it wasn't going to be so easy after all. The husks weren't very strong, but there were a lot of them. To keep them from ganging up on me, I ran ahead to get them in the line. Suddenly, the ground shook and parts of the arena floor opened, revealing pools of lava. What kind of sick games are these? I kept trying to get the husks lined up as I took care not to fall into the lava. Once they were lined up, I started to quickly cut through them one at a time. It took a little while, but finally, they were all defeated. Okay, yay, I won. Can you let me out now? We have a winner. Time for round two. The floor shook again as some pillars rose up from the floor, and this time, a few giant and normal-sized gladiators came charging at me. How many rounds of this am I going to have to do? Luckily for me, the two big gladiators turned on each other, with one of them taking the other out. The bad news was that they were now all focused on me. I ran around the stadium, doing my best to try and block the trident throws and get hits in. This was a much tougher fight, but I was determined to win. Eventually, I was able to take out the trident guy, so I could focus solely on the gladiator. You know what they say about the big guys. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I managed to get the gladiator lined up with a pit of lava. I swung my sword, knocking him in and defeating him. Ladies and gentlemen, the final round! The arena shook again as the lava pits and columns disappeared. Then a door opened and a huge scorpion came running out. This wasn't gonna be easy. This was gonna be my hardest fight yet. I can just stay away from that stinger. I might be able to do this. The scorpion was tough and hit hard. Ouch, you'll pay for that. Suddenly the arena shook again and the lava pits and columns returned. But this time they kept moving in and out. That guy just couldn't make this easy for me, could he? he? Kept fighting the scorpion and at one point my health had dropped dangerously low. But I couldn't give up now. At one point I was able to catch the scorpion in the lava pit but he was able to crawl back out. Looks like I'm just gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. I kept hitting it with blow after blow with my sword until at long last it was defeated. And the crowd goes wild! Well done, brave sir, well done! Please take the spoils of your accomplishment. Another door opened, revealing a room with a chest. I headed over and took a look inside. An elite power bow. And whoa, tons and tons of gold! Just then, Rody came running up to me. Hey, nice job! I was thinking I would keep adventuring with you, but after seeing that, you mind if I live at your base? That shouldn't be a problem. Let's go. I entered the next room, where an elevator was waiting. We went inside and headed back to the base. On day Days 50 to 53, Rody and I emerged from the elevator back at the base. Rody was going to need a place to live, so we got right to work building him his own space. I wanted him to feel right at home. When we had finished, Benoit came over and asked if I could give him a hand with the statue. Benoit and I used some of the blocks he had collected to build out the next part of the statue. He said things had been going well since I had been here last, and he even had something new for me to buy in his shop. We soon finished, and I headed over to his shop. Alright, so you said you've got something new for me? Oui, oui. Take a look. I have a whole stack of diamonds. I'm sure these will be very useful for you. I paid Benoit with the gold I had won from the arena, then took all of the diamonds over to the crafting area. I put together a full set of diamond armor, then used what was left to make a diamond sword, as well as a whole set of diamond tools. That princess has nothing to worry about. I'm on my way. On days 54 to 57, I made my way back up the elevator and stairs and emerged in a frozen tundra. Oh man, it's freezing. I don't know how long I can stay out here. Just then, I noticed that my health started to decrease. I was literally freezing. To make sure I didn't freeze to death, I got right to work building a quick igloo and campfire. This is going to be tough going. I'm not going to be able to survive away from a heat source for too long. Once I had warmed up, I set back out, following the direction of my compass. As I traveled, I kept having to take breaks and set up a small fire to warm up. Eventually, I found the door, built into an ice spike. I made one more stop to warm up. I wasn't sure what was going to be on the next level. Once I was feeling good, I entered and headed on up. On days 58 to 62, I had reached the next floor and noticed that the weather wasn't as bad here. I think my armor is enough to keep me warm. Thank goodness, I was moving at a glacial pace before. I pressed on and soon saw a penguin. How adorable. I should go say hi. I ran up to the penguin when it suddenly attacked. Whoa, I thought you were supposed to be cute and cuddly. I managed to fight off the penguin when I heard something just ahead. I ran forward and saw a bunch of penguins standing around something. It was another adventurer. Hey, leave him alone. I charged and began swinging at the penguins. They were feisty little fighters, but I was able to overwhelm them and take them out. I headed over to the adventurer. Oh no, it looks like he's dead. But what's this? Laying on top of him was a crystal, similar to the one I had picked up earlier. I set it down and the princess appeared, saying the same thing as the one I had found. But wait a second, this princess looks completely different. There must be two princesses in danger. That's the only thing I can think of that makes sense. I better hurry up. Soon after, my compass had led me to the door and I headed in and up the stairs. On day 63 to 66, I emerged on a floor that looked like an ice beach. Ahead in the water, there was a huge ice spike. My compass had been pointing me to it, so I assumed that was where I needed 
needed to go. In the distance, I could see a bridge leading out to the spike, but as I started to cross it, I saw that the end of the bridge had been destroyed. It looks like I can still get across by jumping across those smaller ice spikes, but it's gonna be tricky. If I slipped and fell, I'd be falling into sub-zero water, where I could quickly freeze to death. I had to be careful. I was about halfway across when I nearly slipped. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I was right on the edge, so close that it almost looked like I was floating over the edge. I regained my composure and managed to make it the rest of the way across. Phew, next time I do parkour, it's gonna have to be with lower stakes. I kept jumping and finally made it across the gap. I started to climb the ice spike. When I got to the top, I nearly jumped off in fear. There was a massive polar bear waiting for me. This must be the boss to get through to the next door. Wish me luck! I charged as the polar bear let out a large roar. He swung and nearly knocked me over the edge several times. This guy is tough. How am I gonna beat him? Just then, I had an idea. I was scared of falling off, but shouldn't he be too? I made some space between us and ran over near the edge. Come and get it! The polar bear charged at me full speed. At the last second, I jumped out of the way, causing it to slip right off the edge and down to the ground below. Piece of cake! As I looked over the edge, I could see some of the ice below had melted too. Almost looked like it had formed a word. Interesting! With the polar bear gone, I entered the door and could see that there was an elevator and path to go up. I stepped into the elevator and headed down to the base. On day 67 to 70, I entered the base and went over to talk to Benoit and Rody. Both of them were really excited and impressed by how far I had gotten. They also told me how much fun they were having down in the base. I was glad to hear it, but something was bothering me. Oh, I wanted to ask you guys about something I found. On one of the last floors, I found a crystal with another princess message. Maybe there's two princesses, but something did seem off to me. Before they could answer though, the old woman from the swamp came out of nowhere. This place is full of tricks. That's probably all it is. You should just ignore it. Whoa, what brings you down here? I thought I would pay you a visit. This is quite a nice place you've built down here. If your offer still stands, I wouldn't mind living down here after all. I thought that sounded great, so I got right to work building her a house. I thought it was strange that she had changed her mind, but in any case, it would be good to have some more friends around. Once her house was complete, I headed over to Benoit to see if he had anything new to sell. As a matter of fact, I do. I managed to find some lapis. You can enchant your armor with this. I made a fresh set of coins with my gold and exchanged it for a stack of lapis. I entered the old woman's hut and used her enchanting table to upgrade my gear. I'll be able to tackle any biome or enemy now. I stepped outside to head back up the floors when I remembered we had a statue to work on. I made my way back up and got going on the next part. It didn't take too long and I was soon done. On to the next floor. On day 71 to 74, I returned to the last ice level then started making my way up to the next door. Oof, it's usually not this difficult to reach the next level. Once I had maneuvered to the door, I entered in and was surprised by what I saw on the other side. Did I just enter the nether? The whole app atmosphere had changed. But in the meantime, I decided to mine the magma blocks off the wall. I was going to need those for the statue later. I headed through the door. Wait a second. This looks like the same room, but the door is farther away. What's going on? I ran down the hallway and passed through the door. It was the same hallway again, but the door was even farther away than before. What kind of twisted joke is this? I ran through the next door, and it was the same thing, but the door was even farther away. I started running for the door, but paused about halfway through. Uh, I must have missed something. I'm gonna go back. I turned to go through the last door, when suddenly, a bunch of piglins came bursting through, wielding axes. Ah! I tried to run away, but didn't have any other choice but to fight. With my upgraded gear, I managed to knock both of them out pretty quickly. Okay, maybe I just need to keep moving forward. I moved ahead, when suddenly a couple of blazes spawned. I swung furiously to avoid catching on fire. Suddenly, there were more piglins too. I kept fighting and swinging. I had come so far. Soon, they were all defeated. Ugh, okay, let's keep going. Wait, which way was I going? I was completely turned around. I headed toward one of the doors to go through it. At the time, I didn't know that I was heading back the way I came in, but it turned out that was just what I needed to do. On day 75 to 78, I emerged from the door and found myself in the end. What is going on? Now I'm jumping through dimensions. I took out my compass to figure out where the next door was, but it was just spinning in circles. Looks like I'm going to have to find the next door the old-fashioned way. I started making my way toward the nearest end city when I accidentally looked to the nearest enderman in the eyes. He attacked! Back off, slender boy! It took a few swings of my sword, but I was able to knock him out. It might not be a bad idea to gather up some ender pearls, actually. Those could come in handy. With this in mind, I started my raid on the endermen. One by one, I struck them down and collected the ender pearls. At one point, I even had multiple of them attacking me at once, which was a little scary. But eventually, I had gotten all the pearls I felt I needed. That ought to do it. But hey, might as well collect some blocks for the statue too. I took out my pick and mined up some of the end stone on the ground, getting everything I needed. Then, I headed to the nearest structure, which was covered in shulkers. Time to duck and cover! The shulkers started firing at me, and I did my best to block their shots with my shield and hit them with my sword. I wasn't perfect though, and soon started levitating. Ugh, that doesn't feel so good. The levitating effect wore off, and I dropped to the ground. 
around. Luckily, I wasn't too high, and it didn't do too much damage. Finally, I was able to get close enough to the shulkers to finish them all off. All right, let's see what's up here. I entered the end city and started following the path. There were more shulkers along the way, which I was able to fight off. Sometimes their levitating power even helped me out. It took a little bit to get through everything, but eventually I emerged on the roof and could see a door. That door looks a little weird, but it must be the way through. Let's see what happens. On day 79 to 84, I suddenly appeared on the end central island, and much to my fear, I could see the ender dragon flying around in the distance. This wizard isn't messing around. Looks like I'm gonna have to fight the ender dragon. I lunged forward as the dragon swooped around overhead. What ensued was an epic battle. Okay, first things first, I gotta take care of those end crystals. It's a good thing I got those ender pearls. By throwing the ender pearls, I teleported to the top of the towers and destroyed the end crystals. I had to be careful not to blow myself up, but one by one, I managed to destroy all of them. All right, big guy, it's just you and me now. I ran into the middle of the island and worked on bringing down the dragon's health. The dragon flew by overhead, trying to blast me with its dragon breath. The dragon soon landed, and I was able to get some hits in. As the dragon flew around, I took aim with my elite bow and managed to get some hits in that way too. At long last, the dragon swooped in low, and I hit him with an arrow, finally destroying him. He exploded, dropping a ton of XP orbs. I did it! If I can beat the dragon, surely I can beat a wizard. It was just then that I noticed a chest had appeared on top of the center column. I ran over and opened it up. Look at all these nether scraps. And what's this? In the middle of the chest was a paladin sword. I took it out and equipped it. With the sword in hand, a bunch of light started sparkling around me, and I leveled up into a full-blown paladin. I feel even stronger now. And look what my sword can do. As I swung my sword, I could see it was launching a light sword in the direction I was aiming. So cool. Just then, I noticed there was a button and trap door nearby too. I hit the button and dropped into the hole. When I landed, I saw a familiar room, one with an elevator and some steps. I hit the switch and headed into the elevator. On days 85 to 89, I emerged in the base where Benoit, Rody, and the old woman came running out to meet me. You're back. That must mean you're getting close to the top. You're doing great. Thanks. I've just got a few things to do here, and I think I'll finally be at the top. First of all, I wanted to finish the statue using the extra materials I had collected. No dragon was as scary as one breathing fire in your face, so I made sure to add a stream of fire. And just like that, it was finished. Is this what you thought I'd build when I started? Let me know what you think. With the statue complete, I headed down to the crafting area and used the gold and netherite to create some netherite ingots. Then I used the ingots to upgrade my tools and sword to netherite. Now that everything was upgraded, it was time to say goodbye to my friends before heading up to the final floors. Well guys, it looks like there's actually some hope of us getting out of here. It's been awesome getting to know you, and if I don't make it, hopefully this base can help you until the next adventurer comes along. You are a great friend, Zozo. I know you can do it. We will see you soon, Manami. I turned and headed for the door. I was a man on a mission, and no one was going to get in my way. On days 90 to 94, I merged in a stone corridor. As I stepped into the room, I was immediately attacked by some hoglins. Luckily, I was able to quickly destroy them. There was something familiar about this place. Wait, I think that was the hoglin from day one. This must be the castle I saw before. I was getting close, but I had to stay focused. I opened a nearby door and immediately took some damage. What was that? I took a look inside the room and didn't see anything dangerous. I shut the door again and took more damage. Oh boy, this place must be trapped. I'm gonna have to watch my step. I proceeded down the hallways and ran into more mobs. This place was crazy crawling with enemies. The mobs fought like their lives depended on it, which they did. Unlucky for them though, my new armor and weapons were stacked. They didn't stand a chance. After a ton of fighting, I finally pushed through a large group of them and had a moment to heal up. Well, I might have a few arrows sticking out of me, but I'm still here. I headed back into the corridors, fighting off skeletons as I went. This paladin sword was definitely coming in handy, as I was able to cut down enemies from far away. I kept pushing, taking out piglins and other enemies along the way. I finally entered a room and could tell something was different. On days 95 to 96, I entered a banquet hall and saw something illuminated on the wall. Subscribe? I keep seeing this word everywhere. In any case, I'm happy you're here and appreciate your support. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing. On days 97 to 98, I had gone through a side door and found myself facing a white wall. Suddenly, there was a clicking sound as a drawbridge lowered. Standing in the center of the room was a giant pigless. Uh-oh. This isn't going to be an easy fight. The pigless charged at me. He quickly hit me twice with his mace, which nearly depleted all of my health. If I was going to survive, I was going to have to be more careful careful. Not bad, Baconator, but let's see how you like this. Huh? I had swung my sword, but the pigless disappeared. Where did he go? Suddenly, he reappeared right next to me, nearly catching me off guard. Holy cow! This guy packed a punch. It took everything I had not to get hit, and I had to keep eating golden apples to stay in the fight. By using my paladin sword, though, I was able to hang in there. My friends are counting on me. I can't lose. I kept swinging and fighting until at long last, I landed the final blow, destroying the pigless. It was time to face the wizard. On day 99, I stepped into a large hall. Up ahead, there was a large wooden door. I stepped forward, and the door creaked open, revealing the wizard standing on a platform ahead of me. I walked into the room. Wizard, your traps have failed to stop me. I won't let you continue to keep people captive, and I'm going to free the princess. Get out of my way, or I'll move you myself. 
Ha ha ha, you've done well, but I can't allow you to leave this place. Knights and adventurers can't be trusted. Then you've made your decision. Think fast! I swung my sword, sending a sword beam flying at him, as flames began to appear around me. I jumped out of the way and the flames exploded. This guy wasn't messing around. I'll show you what real magic can do. The wizard shot blasts of green energy at me as I continued to fire off sword energy. He was strong, but I was getting hits in. Suddenly, there was a crash of thunder and a red cloud appeared above me as fireball started to rain down. Ah, that's hot, that's hot. Aha, what do you think of this? There was a poof, and a bunch of wizards appeared, who all charged at me. Holy cannoli, I didn't even know it was possible to do this kind of magic. The wizard clones were aggressive, but I was able to cut them down pretty easily. Then, I kept firing off sword blasts. Oh, why isn't this working? The wizard was getting frustrated. I was winning. Suddenly, he started firing off all of his spells at once. This was starting to be too much to handle. I could just keep hitting him. As one of my sword hits landed, he suddenly started to glow and burst into an explosion of light. Was that it? I I did it! I think. Something didn't seem right about that. But the princess. I need to save her. On day 100, I took a look around the room and saw there was a lever hiding behind one of the banners. I flipped the switch, which opened a secret door. I headed inside. I'm Zozo. I'm here to rescue you. Zozo, my hero. Your hair. Where's the other princess? The what? Oh, yes. The other, uh, don't forget it. There was a burst of light and the wizard was standing in the place of the princess. You, I defeated you. And I'll do it again. Wait. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. It's hard to keep doing the voice. I really didn't mean any harm. What are you talking about? You threw me down a hole. You set me on fire. I fought a giant scorpion in an arena. All illusions. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty good at magic. In fact, it has all been an illusion, including everyone you've met. They're all parts of my personality, manifested by different people. You were never in any real danger. Then what was the point of all of this? The truth is, I'm just lonely. The only true thing was the story of the old woman, or uh, I told you about the king. Well, I'm sorry that that part is true, but don't you think if you have the power to create anything, it'd be better to do something that actually helps people? The wizard thought about it for a second. Uh, yeah, I guess I was too busy feeling sorry for myself to see that. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused you. Please, let me send you on your way. There was a flash of light and we were suddenly back outside of the castle. I ran back into the land as the wizard and all his personalities waved goodbye. I guess in the end we all got what we wanted. I escaped and the wizard got himself a new friend. Perhaps one day we'll go on an adventure together. On day one, I spawned in as a baby robot. Whoa, I'm a tiny robot. But where am I? Why am I in a cage? I looked around and saw there were a couple other bigger robots nearby. They must be my parents. I decided I would go ask them what we were doing here. But before I had a chance to ask them, the door to the cage opened and a giant rat walked into the cage. All right, you junkers, time to get to work. We're tired of taking orders from you. We can't stand by and watch this factory pollute the world any longer. You think you can rise up against us? Sounds like I need to teach you a lesson, pal. The rat lunged forward and started fighting my robot dad. As they were fighting, my robot mom came up next to me. Zozo, the door is open. Move quickly and get out of here. We will hold him off. But I don't understand. Why are we working for this guy? What are we doing here? There's no time to explain, but he isn't even the one in charge of everything. I hope you never run into his boss. No hurry, get out of here. My mom hurried away to help fight off the rat and I took the chance to rush out the door and escape. As I drove away, I turned around and saw the rat destroy my dad. Dad, no! I thought about going back, but I noticed I only had six hearts. If I was captured or killed, my dad's sacrifice would be in vain. As I drove away, I noticed that I had just escaped from a huge factory. There were big pillars of smoke coming out of it, which must have been causing all of the yellow haze. I better get out of here before that rat shows up, or worse, his boss. I was driving away when suddenly I started beeping, and my battery started to drain. Oh no, my battery is going to run out in 30 seconds. What's going on? In a panic, I backed up into the sunlight and saw that my battery immediately started to recharge and returned to full. Whew, that was scary. I must be a solar-powered robot. I'll have to be sure to stay in the light when I'm out and about. I soon found a good place to build a shelter for the night and quickly put up some walls. I made sure to leave the roof open so I could power back up in the morning. On day two, I woke up to a full battery and sunlight coming into my shelter. Looks like my shelter kept me safe through the night, but I have a lot I need to figure out today, starting with rescuing my mom, if she's alive. I knew I wouldn't be able to get back into the factory without gearing up first, which is when I noticed that my arm was a permanent drill. I'll bet I can break all kinds of blocks with this arm. I'm going to try and go get some supplies. I stepped outside my base when I was suddenly attacked by some kind of tiny animal. Ah, what the heck are you? Get back! I swung my drill arm and quickly defeated the enemy. That looked like some kind of mutated bunny. I wonder where he came from. I'll have to keep an eye out. I headed over to a nearby hill where there were some trees growing and collected some wood and stone. Then I set up a crafting table and made an axe, shovel, and sword. My drill arm was pretty handy though. So I decided to start building a mine inside my base. I drilled into the ground and saw I was able to break a bunch of blocks at once. Whoa, mining is going to be a breeze. I was digging down and my battery alarm went off again. I was so excited about my drill, I almost forgot I had to stay in the sun. Luckily I was able to get out before the timer ran out too quickly. 
Looks like I'm gonna have to be a lot more strategic every time I wanna leave the sun. On day three, I decided to venture out a little further to see if I could find some more supplies. I knew I still wasn't strong enough to break my mom out. As I got closer to a nearby cave, I saw something strange inside. What is that? It looks like there's a deactivated robot in there. Their battery must have run out. As I got closer to investigate, I was attacked by a mutant pig. Whoa, get back. The mutant pig had come out of nowhere, but I was able to quickly fight them off. As they disappeared, I saw a whole horde of pigs coming over the hill. I better get out of here. As I was driving away, I couldn't help but wonder what was happening to all of the animals and who was in that cave. Maybe they would be able to help me in the fight. I'd have to try and come check on them later. On days four and five, I was running away when I stumbled across a small farming village. I noticed none of their crops really seemed to be growing. I decided to try and get more information, so I headed to the house at the top of the hill. Hello, is anyone home? The door opened and a farmer stepped out. Hey there, I'm trying to find out what's going on around here. What's wrong with your crops? She explained that the smog coming from the factory was killing all of her crops. Not only that, the smog was also turning all the animals into mutated versions of themselves. She explained that the only way would be to take out the factory's boss. Fat Cat, but everyone was too scared to get close to the factory, so she didn't know any good ways to do that. Well, I've been there once. I can try and get close and see what I can find out. Thanks for your help. I drove off in the direction of the factory. Hopefully I could learn something new before trying to break in. On day six to eight, I started making my way back towards the factory. As I reached the top of the hill, I ran into a mutated sheep. Ah, another one. Take this, you creepy sheepy. By using my sword, I was able to take it down. That farmer was right. The smog is making all the animals crazy. I kept going on my way when I ran into a zombie. As I started to attack him, I noticed he had something interesting in his hand. Are those robot tracks? I'm sure you won't mind me taking those off your hands. After a few hits, he was down. And I was right. He dropped a new set of tracks. I picked them up. Oh, nice. These Mark 1 tracks will give me an armor upgrade. Oh, and check it out. They gave me a speed boost, too. Now I'll be able to get farther on my limited battery. On days 9 to 10, I rolled up to the gates of the factory and took a look inside. Hmm, I don't see much on this side. The workers must be inside. I'll go see if there's anything on the other side. As I got closer to the other side, I could see someone in a suit yelling at a robot. That suit, it must be Fat Cat. I looked into the yard and saw who he was shouting at. It was my mom. We know you helped that little robot escape. You're gonna work overtime until we find him. My mom didn't say anything. She was so brave. If I was going to help her though, I was going to need to find a way to get in. Just then, I heard some pistons moving and snuck over to where I heard the noise. As I peeked over the edge, I saw an opening in the wall of one of the guard towers, and a couple of rats were talking outside. What do you think of my secret door? Pretty nifty, huh? Now we can sneak out and skip work. Nobody will know. I still wasn't strong enough to fight, but knowing this will help me sneak in in the future. As I turned to leave though, my new track squeaked, getting the attention of the rats. Hey, what was that? The rats rushed over to where I was hiding, but thanks to my new speed, I was able to get away without them seeing me. Don't worry, Mom. I'll come back for you. On days 11 through 14, I was heading back to my base when I realized the sun was starting to set. I started putting together a small hut to protect me for the night when I was suddenly attacked by a giant mutated zombie. Holy cow, this guy is huge! I started to build even faster but couldn't focus as I had to keep running away from the zombie. If he keeps chasing me, I'm not going to be able to finish my house before the sun goes down. The sun kept going down and my battery soon started to beep, starting the 30 second countdown. Oh no, if I could just finish. As much as I tried, I couldn't finish the house. All I could do was jump into the unfinished finished build and hope for the best. My battery let out a final beep and I deactivated it. On day 15, I awoke to an unfamiliar face looking at me. Huh? Good morning, little friend. How are you feeling? Wh what happened? Who are you? Don't be alarmed. My name is Gary and I'm here to help. I managed to grab you before that zombie could rip you to pieces. Thank you. You saved me. Whoa, and what's this? Did you upgrade my battery? I did. I wish I could do more, but I only had parts on hand to give you a 60 second charge when you're out of the sun. Wow, that's great. How did you know how to do that? The old man <sighs> sighed before heading into his story. My wife and I actually used to work at the factory building robots just like you. It was a clean, safe place for everyone, and the factory didn't produce the pollution that you see today. But then one day Fat Cat showed up and turned it into the mess you see now. He mistreats the robots and makes them work non-stop, which causes the factory to pollute the land. My wife and I had to flee for our safety. We planned to save the land from the factory, but my wife got sick and wanted to spend her last days growing her flower garden, but nothing would stay alive. She passed away soon after. I can't take Fat Cat down by myself, and everyone else is too afraid to help. But if you are willing to work with me, I think we can do it. I'm so sorry to hear about everything you've gone through. Fat Cat has taken enough from us. Let's take this guy down. On day 16 to 19, I left Gary's house and went to find a good place to build myself a base of operations. After a little bit of searching, I found a good spot to start building. I first cleared out the land, then got to work laying the foundation of the house. Then I put up walls to keep the mutants out, and finally, put up the base itself, making sure to leave windows in the ceiling for light to get in. Once that was finished, I filled the interior with everything I would need. Home sweet home. I hope this can be a place of safety for anyone who wants to help in our fight. 
That reminded me, what happened to that robot I saw in the caves? If I could just get a little stronger, I could fight my way past those mobs and see what was going on. On days 20 to 22, I woke up to sheep sounds outside my base. Oh nice, I could use their wool to build some things. I hurried to my base door and saw a bunch of mutant sheep outside. Oh right, I forgot everything here was green. Oh well, good to know my walls kept them out. I opened the door and started to fight them. I noticed a little mutant bunny was also joining in on the fight. How'd you get mixed up with these bad people? I finished them all off, no problem. After the fight, I could feel a power surge and I suddenly grew into a bigger robot. All right, I even gained four more hearts. I looked closer at my drill. It now had a diamond tip. Wow. I decided to go and give it a test. Looks like I can break blocks even faster than before. This is great. On days 23 to 27, I left my base to try and look for that robot in the cave. I had no idea if they would still be there, but maybe they could help in our fight against Fat Cat. Since I had just gotten my new upgrades, it felt like the right time to try again. Before I got back to the cave, I stopped by an abandoned mine shaft I had seen earlier. I'm going to need a way to transport the robot back so I can take these old rails to do it. I soon gathered up all the rails and found myself looking over the cliff to the cave. It looked like the robot was still in there, so I rushed down the hill and attacked the mutant pigs. I'm not gonna run away this time. They put up a good fight, but my new abilities were too much for them. I fought as hard as I could and won. Finally, now I can get this robot out of here. Looks like they're deactivated. I quickly laid down some tracks, got the robot into a minecart, and started heading back to the base. On days 28 to 32, I arrived back at the base, and I saw Gary had moved a lot of his supplies in. This will help us coordinate our plans much easier. Gary, I found this robot out in a cave. Do you think you can help her? Oh, I recognize this model. They call her Eve. Gary took a look and could immediately tell what was wrong. Yep, looks like her battery's fried. She must have been caught out in the wilderness. So what can we do? Do you think you can fix her? Not with the supplies I have on hand, but I know of a warehouse in the desert that used to have the components. I can tell you where to go to find it. Gary told me where to go, but before I left, I made some improvements to the base. I added a second layer to the walls and got to work on building Gary a house to work out of. Everything was looking great, and I even built a working drawbridge. No one is going to be breaking into here. On days 33 to 36, I was getting ready to leave when Gary stopped me and said he had something to ask me. Zozo, I had a question to ask you. Why are you so nice to everyone? Well, I wish I could take all the credit, but there's a robot I really really look up to has inspired me to be nice and always try and help. He's a sassy dude, but in the end, he always does the right thing. That's great. I think we should build a statue of this robot as a symbol to everyone, but they are still good in this world. That would be a great idea. I rushed out and was able to find some non-mutated sheep to use for the build. I led them back to the base and put them in a pen I had made. Then I got to work on the statue. I started with the base, then moved on to the statue itself. After a while, I had finished the first part. This is coming along great. I hope you're enjoying it so far too. If you like what you're seeing, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way, you'll You'll never miss my next adventure. On days 37 to 40, I entered the desert to begin my journey to the warehouse. I can already feel the temperature rising, but that means lots of sunlight for my battery. As I made my way toward a small hill, I heard a strange sound up ahead. I wonder what that could be. As I came over the hill, I saw a group of mutant horses who attacked me. Ah, oh, this feels so wrong to be fighting horses. But you guys aren't as nice as your non-mutant brothers. After a tough fight, I was able to finish them off. I made it through, but these mobs were getting tougher. I'm gonna have to find a good spot to build a camp and craft some upgrades. Who knows what could be waiting for me at the warehouse. On days 41 to 43, I found a nice spot against the cliff full of ores. Whoa, look at all these ores. I can use these to give myself an upgrade. I also noticed there was a nice spot in the corner where I could build a camp. I quickly laid down some blocks for a foundation and then set up all the tools I would need. Then I worked on building the walls and finished it up with a glass ceiling. With the base set up, I headed over to the ore deposit and mined out some gold and some iron. I can use this iron to upgrade my armor, and I've got a special item in mind for the gold. I quickly smelted down all the iron in my blast furnace, then got started smelting all the gold. Then I made an iron chest plate, iron leggings, and an iron helmet. With the leftover iron, I decided to make myself an iron sword, axe, shovel, and hoe as well. To finish up, I then made a gold block, which I then mixed with some gold bars in my tire tracks. This let me upgrade my tracks to the Mark II version which gave me even more protection than before. Wow. I feel like I can take on anything now. Let's go find that warehouse. From days 44 to 49, I left my house to finally find the warehouse. After a while, I could finally see it. That must be it. I hope the parts we need are inside. As I entered the building, I could see the place was in ruins. This place has been completely picked apart. It looks like I might just have to head home and figure something else out. Hey you! A little rat came running over to me. What could he want? What do you want? Aren't you working with Fat Cat? No, no, not at all. You think rats want to work with cats? That giant rat has betrayed all rat kind, and I want to take him out. You think you can help? It sounds like we want the same thing, but how do I know I can trust you? You came here to this warehouse because you're looking for something, right? The giant rat cleaned all these warehouses out and moved everything to his base. I can show you where it is. I didn't know if I could trust him, but I agreed to work with him, so we headed off to the base. On days 50 to 53, the rat and I were traveling when a gazelle called out to us from a village. It looked like something was wrong. Hey, what's going on? 
She told us that a group of husks were attacking their village and they needed our help. If we would help them, she would give me something useful. I'm always happy to do what I can. She led us into the village and I charged at the husks. The rat even joined in on the fight. Maybe I could trust him after all. It wasn't long until we had eliminated all of the husks and stay down. The gazelle thanked us for our help and told us to follow her to the village workshop. When we arrived, she told me to take what was inside the chest. Whoa, are these blueprints on how to build a focus lens? If I can build that, then I could use it to redirect light into deep holes for mining. On days 54 to 57, I decided I would construct a lens and try to mine for diamonds. I first needed to gather some resources though, so I headed out into the desert. While I was on my way, I was suddenly attacked by a gang of mutant cats. These mutant animals are just getting weirder and weirder. I noticed there was a little mutant bird fighting along them too. A bird fighting with cats and rats are working with fat cat? This world is crazy. After beating the mutants, I got to work digging up some sand to make glass. Once I had collected all the sand I needed, I headed back to my base and started smelting the sand. Alrighty, time to start building this lens. I constructed two pillars for the base, then put the lens together using the glass I had just smelted. There was a shadow on the ground for now, but once I turned the lens, that should disappear. Okay, let's see if this thing works. I headed over to the activate button and gave it a press. As the lens rotated, I saw the shadow on the ground disappear. I quickly got to work digging a deep hole. It's nice to not have to worry about my battery running out. Once I started to hit bedrock, I built an angled mirror at the bottom so I could do some strip mining. The mirror was able to reflect enough light for me to be able to start mining to the side. Before long, I mined into a room full of diamonds. Amazing, this is just what I needed. I quickly mined all of the ores that I could and then headed out of the mine to craft. On days 58 to 62, I headed into my base to start crafting with the new materials I had just mined. I noticed that while I had been down in the mines, the rat had made himself a small hut off to the side of my base. Pretty cozy. Back at my crafting table, I made a diamond chest plate, helmet, and leggings. With the remaining diamonds, I also made myself a sword. Feels good to know this armor will keep me safer than before. The fight against giant rat will be a tough one. On day 63 to 66, I met the rat outside my base. Before we get going, is there anything else that I need to know? Yeah, you'll need all the support you can get. So anyone who is listening to this should subscribe and like the video. That ought to give you the strength you need. That's true. That would help a ton. The rat and I headed off to go fight the giant rat. We soon left the desert and entered the Badlands. As we made our way, we suddenly saw a pack of mutant wolves headed right at us. Mutant wolves now? This just doesn't even surprise me anymore. The rat and I launched into attack mode and fought against the pack. The rat was proving to be a good teammate and we were able to defeat them in no time. Nice job. I feel like we're making a great team. On days 67 to 70, we made our way to the edge of a cliff overlooking the giant rat's warehouse. Whoa, do you see that? Running into the warehouse was a huge pack of rats, all carrying different pieces of loot. We were definitely in the right place. All right, buddy, what's the best way in? I waited for the rat to reply, but he didn't say anything. Suddenly, I heard a bunch of squeaking and saw the pack of rats come screaming out of the building. They were headed right towards us. He had betrayed us. No, I thought you were my friend. Soon the rats were on me and I tried to fight them off. Oh no, there's so many of them. I don't know if I can get out of this one. I managed to take a few of them out, but it felt like a fight I couldn't win. And I was right. The rats injected me with something that depleted my battery, and I shut oh, down. No. While I was shut down, the rats pushed me down the hill, into the warehouse, and locked me away in a cell. On days 71 to 74, I started the day deactivated in the jail cell, when suddenly there was a huge explosion in the ceiling. The roof blew away, which let light come in, recharging my battery to full. As I turned back on, I saw Gary jump in from the ceiling. Gary, you're here! Come on, Zozo, let's get you out of here. Gary set some TNT by the jail doors and blew a hole in the bars. As we jumped through, we were attacked by the gang of rats. You guys aren't going to shut me down again. With Gary's help, we were able to fight off the horde of rats, but since we were out of the sun, my battery had started to deplete again. Don't worry, Zozo, I've got a solution to your battery problem. Gary took out his bazooka and blasted a hole in the roof, which let the sun come in. I quickly recharged. Let's take a look in these supply closets. I'm sure there's going to be some useful items. Gary and I started looking at all the crates, and there were tons of useful items. Netherite scraps! I can use this to upgrade my gear! I went ahead and grabbed the emeralds too, just for good measure. We continued moving through the warehouse, with Gary blowing holes in the roof as we went. In the next room, we found even more supplies. More netherite scraps, and healing potions! Whoa, and check it out! Gold nuggets! Just what I need to make some netherite ingots! We had gotten some good loot, but we still needed to get parts to fix Eve. There was only one place we hadn't checked, Giant Rat's office. On days 75 to 78, we reached the giant rat's office. Watch out, rat man, we're coming in. I punched the door open and headed inside with Gary. Giant rat was inside on his desk. His battery was on the wall behind him. Give us the battery, or we're going to have to take you out too. This battery powers the one robot with the code to shut down Fat Cat's factory. You found it, didn't you? 
I know where your little base is. Once I've taken care of you, I'll destroy that little robot once and for all. We'll never let you destroy her. We're taking that battery and shutting the factory down. Just then, the giant rat leaped forward and started attacking Gary. We both pulled out our weapons and started to fight. Stay strong, Gary. We can beat this guy. The giant rat was really powerful, and my health bar got really low. But in the end, we were finally able to defeat him. We did it. Nice job, Gary. Let's grab the battery and get out of here. Gary? I turned and saw that Gary had been seriously wounded. Gary, you don't look so good. Come on, let's get you some help. There's no time, Zozo, but there's something you should know first. I was the one that hid the robot Eve away. She needed to be in a safe place. I thought telling you what code she contained would put you in too much danger. The more he spoke, the worse he looked. It's okay, it's okay. Maybe you should sit down. Gary slumped down against the wall. You've been a great friend, Zozo. I know you can do this. She would have loved you too. She? I had hoped to see your flowers bloom one more time. My wife. Her name was Eve. Gary put his head down and he was gone. Thank you for everything, Gary. I won't let you down. On day 79 to 84, I grabbed the battery off the wall and left the office. I couldn't believe Gary was gone. As I headed down the stairs, I heard a familiar voice. So, now that the giant rat is gone, you need a new leader. And that leader should be me. This whole time that rat was just trying to take over the rats. I couldn't let this stand. You cost me everything. I charged down the stairs and attacked the rat. I was so angry I was able to defeat him in no time. All the other rats were so scared they didn't even try to get involved. I've got to get this battery back to Eve and shut down the factory. I headed out to return to the base. On days 85 to 89, I arrived back at the base and put Eve's battery pack in. After a moment, she booted up and looked right at me. Hello, what's your name? Hi, I'm Zozo. Gary told me that you should have code to shut down the Fat Cat factory. Is that true? That is correct. I would be happy to assist you with doing so. Where is Gary? I would love to see my creator again. He didn't make it, but he would have wanted us to work together. I see. I'm sorry to hear it, but I agree. Gary and Eve are my best friends, and I'm sure we will be good friends too. I agree, which reminds me, do you think he could help me with something? Eve and I headed outside, and I got her help finishing the robot statue. Finishing the statue gave me the courage to be brave. Brave like my robot hero, and brave like Gary. Before long, the statue was complete. This looks amazing. Thanks for all of your help, Eve. From there, I went to work on building Eve a place to stay as well. I made sure to give her everything she needed to be comfortable. Once I finished the outside, I worked on decorating the inside with all the tools she'll need. With everything complete, I just had one more task to finish. Using the nether scraps and gold I had collected, I made a netherite ingot. Then, I used that to upgrade my diamond sword. Nothing's gonna stop us now. On days 90 to 94, I decided I should go through Gary's room to see if there was anything he may have had to help us in the final fight. As I was looking around, I came across Gary's diary. His last entry confirmed his plan to follow me to the warehouse. Under that entry was a note meant for me. If you're reading this, I didn't make it. The last thing I need to tell you is that Eve knows how to do something special. She can also craft a battery for you. With such a battery, you can function without the need for sunlight. Wow, what an amazing gift. I'll go ask her. I headed back out and found Eve. I asked her about the battery. Let me check my data logs. Scanning. Oh yes, I found the recipe. Right this way. Eve grabbed some supplies from a chest, then headed over to the crafting table. Moments later, we headed outside, and she tossed the new battery pack to me. I put it in. I immediately felt a power surge and turned into a giant robot. My battery pack showed it was upgraded too. Whoa, look at me. I feel great. Fat Cat isn't going to know what hit him. On days 95 to 96, I headed outside to meet up with Eve. Today's the day, Eve. Let's go save the world. Eve and I took off in the direction of the factory. After a while, we arrived near the edge. Looking ahead, I could see some rats patrolling the perimeter. Once they had passed, we snuck up to the hidden entrance I had seen before. If we hit this button, it will let us inside. I hit the button and Eve and I snuck inside. Once we were in, we didn't see anyone else around. It looks like the coast is clear. Let's see if we can get to the robots inside. As we ran across the open space, we heard a squeak. A single rat guard was standing there. Maybe he can tell us where the robots are. Hey, don't move and we won't hurt you. Where are all the robots? Fag Cat gathered them all in the incinerator room. He's threatening to melt them all down because one lady robot keeps trying to lead revolts. That sounds like my mom. Thanks for the tip. We can't risk you giving us away though, so I'm sure you won't mind us locking you up. Mm -hmm. Eve shot a rat net at him, which put him in a rat sack. I picked him up and put him in my safety compartment. Come on, let's get to the incinerator room. On days 97 to 98, we entered the incinerator room and saw my mom dangling above the lava pit. We have to save her. Hang on, mom, we'll get you out. I looked across the room and saw a lever that controlled the device, but then I noticed a rat on the other side of the room watching us. He ran towards the lever. Oh no you don't. I ran toward the rat while Eve started shooting her laser cannon. It was a close one, but we managed to take him out before he could pull the switch. 
Zozo, is it really you? Mom, I'm so glad to see you're still alive. Where are all the other robots? We have to get everyone out. Fat Cat is keeping them locked in the next room over. I can get them out, but I don't know how we'll get out of here unnoticed. There's a secret entrance that we use to get in. You guys can use that to escape. Thank you, Zozo, and be safe. Fat Cat will be in the main factory. I love you. Good luck. On day 99, we left the incinerator room and made our way towards the main factory. On our way toward the factory doors, we heard a terrifying voice. Well, 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 if it isn't little Zozo. Fat Cat was looking down at us from the factory's second story window. Fat Cat, the madness has to stop. We're shutting down this factory one way or another. We'll see about that rat pack attack. Just then, the largest pack of rats I had ever seen came charging at us. This must have been every rat in the factory. Time to see how good my upgrades really were. Bring it on, you little creeps. Even I threw everything we had at the rats. With my new abilities, these rats didn't stand a chance. Eve shot them with her laser cannon, and I hit them back with my new gear. Before long, we had managed to take most of them out, which made the remaining rats all run away in fear. Yeah, you better run. Eve and I walked up to the factory door, but before going in, I turned to talk to Eve. Eve. I could really use your help in this fight, but we can't risk you getting hurt. We need you to stay safe so you can shut down the factory. I understand. And Zozo, there's something else I want to say before you go in there. Yeah, what is it? I know you'll make it through this, and I just think everyone should subscribe so they can see what you'll do next. Wow, that really means a lot to me, Eve. Thank you. I'll see you when it's all done. On day 100, I entered the factory and saw Fat Cat looking down at me from the second story balcony. It's over, Zozo. I have the high ground. What? This little revolution ends today. I don't care how many rats you kill or how many robots you free. I'll never shut this place down. And just like that, he attacked. As we exchanged blows, it was clear to me that he was way stronger than I could have thought. You could have had a great life working in my factory and making me rich, but it looks like it's over for you. My hearts were getting really low. It didn't look like I was going to make it. But just then, a laser came out of nowhere and hit Fat Cat. Eve! Eve came in and started fighting with Fat Cat, which gave me a second to use my potions and heal up. Then I got back into the fight. You're in trouble now, Fat Cat. As I started to fight, I was able to distract Fat Cat and lead him away. While I did that, Eve snuck around to the main factory shutoff and input her code. No, my factory! Suddenly, Fat Cat stopped moving and a tiny cat popped out. He was a cat in a robot suit this whole time. There he is, boys! Get him! The pack of rats appeared and chased Fat Cat out of the factory. We did it, Eve! I'm sure the world will return back to normal in no time. Now let's go find my mom. We have a lot of catching up to do. I think Gary would have been proud.